You're tuned in to Knights Re-Air, presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game, sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side. On the road to take on Temple. George O'Leary's ball club perfect in its first year of American Athletic Conference play in his 10th season in Orlando. So a veteran going up against a rookie. Matt Rule, a longtime assistant for Al Golden and Steve Adazio here before spending one season last year in the NFL with Tom Coughlin and the Giants returning to Philadelphia. Yeah, this is a, a young man that really has got the energy going and changed the culture here at Temple. I really like what he's doing and getting these kids motivated and buying in, even though they're one and eight on the season. When this game was on the schedule, the Knights down in Orlando probably felt, ooh, Philadelphia in November, but a perfect afternoon now for the Temple faithful and the visitors from Central Florida. So Temple won the toss and the Owls elected to receive to get P.J. Walker and the offense the first crack. Sean Galvin will kick it off for the Knights. Knights are used to getting the ball first, but it'll be Gilmore and Thomas. That's Jihad Thomas, 34, in the black, looking to make something happen here for the Owls. Perfect in league play, going up against winless in league play. Can the Owls shock the Knights? We are underway in the American game of the week. This is Thomas. Across the 20, across the 30. Still on his feet, pushed out of bounds after a 33-yard return. Michael Easton with the tackle, but good field position here for P.J. Walker and the freshman out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. You get the feeling has rejuvenated the entire program. Well, since he started, he has progressed every single week. He's got very high completion percentage, and I know today that they want to get him in a groove and try to get some completions early against his Central Florida defense. They start with Kenneth Harper, a Florida native, so you know he's fired up for this ball game in the backfield, and a bunch set wide to the left for Walker. First and 10 from the Al 38. Quick out to Anderson in Central Florida, all over it. Clayton gathers with the tackle. They push him back about a mile. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like it'll be a loss of two. Look at P.J. Walker's numbers there. 63% completion percentage, which to me is outstanding. He's shown great vision on the field, finding his receivers. And today he has to make quick reads, Eamon. He has to, if it's not open at the one and two, he's got to tuck that ball away and use his legs and versatility. Ooh. Second and 12, Anderson in motion. Walker on the rollout, looking for Anderson, who makes the grab, heads up field. Pushed out of bounds by Sean Mag. Gain of eight. Now let's take a look at our impact players, brought to you by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. Well, the first two passes go to our impact players. Robbie Anderson, 6'3", can jump up high and get the ball. And on defense, Clayton Gathers, he's the guy that's going to be around the ball today. A ball hawk, a guy that's a big-time tackler, and will be around all day long. Third and three from the 45. Walker with time. Anderson again open for a first down in night territory. Brought down at the Central Florida 46, a gain of nine. There are impact players in on the play. Anderson the catch, the tackle by Gathers. Well, Chris, uh, Chris Coyer, the tight end, is not going to be able to play today, so they're going to run, not going to run the ball as much, and they're going to try to get themselves in third and short situations the majority of this game and try to run and make the plays in the passing game similar to what they do in the run. So now they empty the backfield, five wide receivers for the freshman. Pumps, gets rid of it. Anderson, it's a two-man show right now for the Owls. Pitch and catch, 11 to 19. Now let's plan for success, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual, the official financial planning partner of the NCAA. Oh, when Central Florida has the ball, they gotta be able to 
Make sure Phil Snow doesn't kick, take advantage of them with their blitzes. Is he going to bring a flurry of them and then discipline pass rushers? When you're going against P.J. Walker, you want to stay in your lanes and keep containing the pocket and tempo. Walker's got to use his versatility, his legs, his arm. He's got to be smart with the football and on defense. When they dial it up, they got to get to Blake Bortles. They dial it up there. Walker sees it coming. Flag on the play. This will come back, but Walker showing that versatility. Picking up 18, but it looks like this will be a hold against the Owls. Holding number 63, the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, second down. There's a look at our referee today, Michael Roach. Penalty goes up against, goes against Pete White. Well, these are penalties and plays that have been happening for Temple all year. They have big runs. You see a big run by P.J. Walker, and it gets called back for a penalty. So they've really been shooting themselves in the foot. It really shows to their youth of this team. They have inexperience across the board, and they're trying to get better week in and week out. So now that makes it second and 14 from midfield. Knight showing pressure. There it comes, up the middle. Walker gets rid of it. Nice grab there by Christopher. One-handed grab with the left hand. It's his birthday today, so he celebrates it there with that catch to pick up six. He'll be an important part of this passing game today because he runs those short wells very good. He's in that slot, so he's going to be running them Wes Welker-type routes, the option game to get those three, four, five-yard catches. And he has shown the ability week after week to make the spectacular grab. Now third and eight. From the Central Florida 44. Knight showing pressure off the edge. Walker checking out of the play. With time. In the coverage. No flag. Incomplete. Looked like DJ Killings had a hold of the jersey, but it goes as an incomplete pass. They were looking for Christopher, and Matt Rule saw that as well. Yeah, that was close. I definitely saw the jersey get pulled there. Back judge didn't call it. So now Paul Layton out to punt. J.J. Wharton standing on the Central Florida 10. Good high kick. Wharton lets it go. It bounces at the five, and it'll die for Temple. A great kick by Layton, one of the bright spots on special teams this year for the Owls. 43 yards, no return, obviously, and Central Florida takes over on its own two. I really like Blake Bortles, and there's three reasons why. One, his pre-snap awareness, seeing the defense, getting his offense in the right situations. Two, his ability to throw any route on the route tree. He can make all the passes down the field. And three, extending the play with his legs. He always has his eyes downfield looking for receivers, and if he doesn't have it, he'll tuck it away and run. Storm Johnson a week ago, a career high 127 yards. He's in the backfield out of the Central Florida end zone, and he has it here, and the Owls are ready for him. Now our impact players brought to you again by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. Well, Storm Johnson is definitely the feature back today. They're going to try to get the run going, and it's going to come down to tackling in the second level. And there's two guys for Temple to need to step up. Nate D. Smith has come up week to week, but we all know Tyler Matikavich. Just under 10 solo tackles, tackles a game. One of the premier tacklers in college football. The Knights today going out, going without wide receiver Brashad Perriman. He is back home in Orlando after suffering that big hit against Houston. So they run it to the right. Johnson looking for an alley. Gets out to about the seven. Gain of three. So now third down as Matt Ioannidis was in on the tackle. Temple changing things up. In the front seven. Looking to get some strength outside, but now a third and five for Bortles Johnson in this night offense. There's no question this offense is so dynamic. They have so many wide receivers and weapons. Even though they're down Perryman, Wharton and Reese and Hall are all one of his favorite targets. And even Godfrey has stepped up and really done well at the receiver position. Twins to both sides. Johnson in the backfield. Temple does not bring the blitz on this third down. Bortles with time. Now he's looking to run. Gets the first down and then some. He is still inbounds finally. Pushed out of bounds by Abdul Smith. 
But Blake Bortles, a 19-yard pickup. Anthony, you mentioned his size. That's why George O'Leary was one of the few head coaches who thought of him as a quarterback when he was coming out of high school. Everyone thought tight end. Even now, George O'Leary will mention, he said, you know, if he's not a quarterback, we can always play him at tight end. I think he's doing fine. He's just fine. <laughs> Ready to throw here. The long out. Catch made. Wharton makes the first man miss. Surges ahead for another first down. 13-yard pickup. A.T. Smith on the tackle. See his numbers there. We all know the famed quarterback that he's chasing is Dante Culpepper, who had a great career at Central Florida. But he's only a junior, so he's rising the scale every, every single game. And to me, he's definitely a prospect that's going to flourish at the next level. You keep saying that after only a junior. He may not be around in Orlando much longer. That's a great point. First and 10 from the Central Florida 39. Back to the running game in Johnson. He has an alley, bounces it to the outside. Smith forces him out. It looks like it's another night first down, a 10-yard pickup. We give so much credit to Storm Johnson and even William Stanback when they come into the game at the running back position. But this offensive line has really done a great job with McCray brother twins at the guard position. They really have created open holes for this running game to get sparked. Storm's family making the trip from Loganville, Georgia, to check out this ball game. He's still out there. Two tights on first and 10 from the 49. Play fake. Pressure. Bortles avoids it momentarily. And he's brought down from behind by Nate D. Smith. Great pursuit by the sophomore out of New Jersey for a loss of two. The younger brother of former Eagle standout tight end L.J. Smith. Now on second and 12, they empty the backfield. Five receivers for Bortles. He's going to keep it himself. The design QB draw gets met by Matikiewicz into Temple territory, a pickup of seven, so that'll set up third and manageable five yards. And that's the key word, manageable. They put themselves in positions. They're very balanced attack on offense. They can run the ball, they can pass it. They have those options when it's third and short, and they can move the chains. That's the biggest thing. They extend those drives, and that's what made this offense so efficient this season. From the Temple, 46. Trips to the left. Hall, bottom of your screen to the right. Bortles looking to throw, looking for Hall. He has a step. Knocked away. Anthony Roby with the play. So Alderman back on the Temple 8. This is Galvin. A low wobbler. And it takes a great night bounce. And he matches Layton's effort and then some as that is down inside the one yard line for a punt of 45. So the Knights and the Owls have exchanged punts here in the first quarter, still scoreless in Philadelphia in the American Game of the Week presented by Gil Dan. Well, you got this little bit to the right, you got it. You are so gonna make the team. Addition Financial can't help you with your jump shot. But for home ownership, affordable financing, and savings accounts, count us in. Welcome back to Philadelphia. Matt Rule working the officials there. You say that's holding. I'm going to guess that he's still going back to that last third down in completion. Building a great foundation with this team. Zaire Williams in the backfield. They roll the pocket and Walker. And there is Christopher again, but he's going to come down out of bounds. Walker let him just a bit too much. Second and ten from the Temple one. Now they go two backs for the first time. Gilmore and Williams. And it doesn't look like he got out of the end zone. Safety. Huh. Troy Gray comes up with the tackle. They knew running it was gonna be tough today against George O'Leary's defense. And the freshman can't make it out of the end zone. Well, on first down, you usually try to get the ball out of the end zone. They try it on second down. And as a running back, you cannot bounce around behind your linemen. you got to stick your head down and get up the field as much as you can. Even if you get to the line of scrimmage, costly play there to stop at that line of scrimmage and dance. Gets tackled for loss. Great play by Central Florida. 
So credit to special teams for pinning Temple down inside the one. You see Williams frustrated there. Jeff Whittingham trying to calm him down. Whittingham, the senior out of Atlantic City, talking of the freshman from the Camden area. So George O'Leary's team breaks through and grabs the early lead and will get the ball back. Well, that's a young team right there, inexperienced. You have those issues that happen. You've got to come back and rise up and shake it off. That's the big, been the biggest thing, not carrying it over to the next series. So we'll see when Temple comes back on offense if they can regroup and get themselves to drive. So there's a look at the freshman Williams stand back. He and Hall are back ready to receive the kick. Boom it away, so now stand back off, replaced by J.J. Wharton. Central Florida should get pretty decent field position out of this, along with the two points. So a huge swing here created by the punt coverage team. After Temple came up with a stop on Bortles. Here's the kick from Layton, and it's a wobbler and short, and it goes out of bounds. So there's a flag. So Temple, Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The Central Florida's ball at the 50-yard line, first and 10. Not what Matt Rule was looking for after his defense came up with the stop. All of a sudden, he's behind by two, and Blake Bortles and the Knights are at midfield. Troy Gray breaking through the 17th-ranked team in the country on the board. If you are having any symptoms of chest pain or any symptoms that can correlate to a stroke, please come to the emergency department and let us take care of you. There is no safer place for your emergency than our emergency department. We would protect you like we protect ourselves. The quicker you get to the ER, the better your outcome is gonna be. We've never been more ready to take care of you and your family for an emergency. Blake Bortles and the night offense back on the field with a 2-0 lead now. First and 10 from midfield. This is the American Game of the Week presented by Gil Dan. Central Florida in the driver's seat for an automatic BCS bid courtesy of the win at Louisville and then the win last week at home over Houston. Storm Johnson back out there in the backfield. This is Hall in motion. Hall looking to turn the corner, and he does. Gets a block, still on his feet. Hit from behind at the Temple 30. A gain of 20. So Avery Robinson not giving up on the play, but a big gain by the wide receiver. Yeah, Hall's a very versatile player. You know, they use him a lot in that Jet, uh, jet sweep around, they hand the ball off to him. Nice run, but the blocking, the receivers have done an excellent job all of the year of not just catching the ball, but blocking them DBs. First and 10 from the 30. This is Johnson. Met behind the line of scrimmage by Brandon Chudnoff. Tackle for a one yard loss. A sophomore from right here in Philadelphia. As Coach Rule keeps reminding us, the guys who are playing now were on scout team when we were getting ready for <laughs> Notre Dame in Houston back in September. Play fake, no, they give it to Johnson. Johnson, tons of room. Inside the 10. That was a well-executed play. One thing I can say about Storm Johnson is when he gets to the second level and he has a one-on-one, -on -one, He's probably going to shake you and get by. You see there, he puts the move on number 21, Smith. Again, it's his vision, movement, security. He sees the defender coming with the stiff arm. He's really a well-rounded running back, not only in the conference, but in the country. He leads the conference with 12 touchdowns and with first and goal from the six. He is smelling the goal line here. And they give it to him. Right up the middle for a gain of two. Levi Brown with the tackle. 
Coaches say, you know, sometimes he likes to dance, quick to bounce. They want him to run with that four-yard attitude. You're right. Well, when they were on the biggest stage against Louisville, that's where he said he made the turn and started hitting them holes quicker and getting downhill. And he had 188 total yards in that game, which was his best game of the year, and he's grown from them. So now they bring in the fullback, Joseph Popolo, for an extra blocker. He leads the way, but Johnson met at the three by a swarm of Temple tacklers, including Nate D. Smith and Blaze Caponegro. One thing I can say about Temple's defense is when they get down to the red zone, they really do step up and play better in that shortened space. We've done several games this year where they played against teams and had some nice goal line stands. Let's see you here on third down if they can keep them out of the end zone. Conversely, what are you expecting from the Knights here out of the gun? Well, you know, you, get, you can get those crisscrosses receivers on the top and really set picks for each other and set a ball high to the corner. Blake throws a great football, especially down in the red zone. Godfrey and Wharton to the left. Reese looking the other end, and Hall cannot make the catch. No flag. Roby with excellent coverage on Hall. So now on fourth down, does George O'Leary settle for the field goal? Well, Roby does a great job here. And when this field is shrank down, he doesn't have a lot of room to cover. He's on Hall all the way through. And when he comes out of his break, he just has to find the ball and knocks it down. Great job. Right now, that's a win. If you can hold this offense to a field goal, Temple has to be happy with that right now. So they send out Sean Moffitt, who was perfect on the season until having a 50-yarder blocked last week by the Cougars. This one a bit easier. Just 20 yards and right down Broad Street. So the Knights take advantage of the good field position, but as Anthony said, a win for the Owls as George O'Leary's club kicks the field goal. At Blaze Pizza, artisanal quality at crazy fast speed is what we're all about. Fresh dough made from scratch daily. Choose any toppings you like. Then it's just 180 seconds in our blazing hot oven for fast-fired perfection. Enjoy your Blaze favorites for delivery or carryout. Right now, we're offering delivery specials through our app or online, including a one-topping large pizza for just $10 or two two-topping large pizzas for $22. Download the Blaze Pizza app or visit us online at blazepizza.com. Back here in Philadelphia, really the good punt by Houston and the great coverage by the punt team has led to five Central Florida points here as it's really a win for Temple right now to be only down 5-0. Well, honestly, this has been kind of a microcosm of Temple's season this year. They had Louisville, Houston at home, two high power offense that they held to field goals and stopped them in the red zone early. So now they have to convert on offense. They got to go down and put points on the board, preferably touchdowns, because when Central Florida is going to start getting rolling here, they're going to start putting up points. Temple has to find ways to get more efficient and put drives together on offense. Thomas again from the one. Across the 25, flag down. So a 29-yard return, but it looks like they will be backed up. During the return, holding number 31 of the return team. It's a 10-yard penalty, first down. Matt Rule been looking to clean things up almost all year long. As you mentioned, penalties have really been a problem. And you take a look at P.J. Walker, a slow start, baby steps against Fordham. Started taking more and more reps when Connor Riley got hurt during the off week. And you see the emergence of the true freshman. Well, you're right, and I think the biggest thing here is the points they're scoring. They're putting the output. It's just not coming at the right time. These are situations here when you get, you hold the team to a field goal, you've got to come back and put something up on the board. Here comes pressure. Walker feels it, gets rid of it. Nice catch finally by Harper. Count that as four catches for Harper. Well, I spoke a moment too soon, but they will take it. E.J. Dunstan with the tackle, four-yard gain. Let's check in with Brooke. Well, guys, a couple of reasons why P.J. Walker is becoming a better quarterback. Connor Riley goes up to Walker after that first interception against Rutgers and said, hey, man, you had your flat, right, your flat route wide open. P.J. said it helps him knowing he's going to hear positive feedback when he comes back to the sideline. The second footwork, he's been watching film of Johnny Menzel trying to get better on the run. And third, he's a better quarterback after he gets hit. Offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield said 
when you get hit, it actually helps take the tension out and makes him relax a little better. Illegal contact, number 94, the defense. It's a five-yard penalty, second down. So that'll make it second and one. If you're Marcus Saddle, Satterfield and Matt Rule, how much does that open up your playbook here? Well, again, I mean, you do have options, and, and they're going to stay with the pass, in my opinion. And like you said, when you have a quarterback that can run, it makes it easier when you're only one yard away from the first down. Here comes pressure up the middle. Harper runs right into it, but fighting hard. I don't know if he got the first down. Looked like Troy Gray was coming up the middle. No gain. Dunstan and Plummer on the tackle. Well, to me, you know, we've talked about this. We talked to the coaches yesterday, and they said they're going to pass the ball. And they've come into these situations where third and short, they think, well, let's run it. Well, that's the situation. It's hard to run because you don't have the blocking tight end there to help the run game. So to me, keep it spread out. Throw the ball. Keep the defense on their heels. Now they're putting themselves in a third and one situation. Again, a very reasonable turnover here for them to get the first down. More pressure coming. They Run it right up the middle, and this time Harper lowers the shoulder for the first down, a pickup of four. Kenny Harper, the coaches, despite the emergence of P.J. Walker, still telling us he has been the MVP of the offense here for Temple. He is. He's a workhorse, big, strong back. He's tough to bring down. He's got 11 total touchdowns, nine of them in the rushing game, so he really brings a presence down when they get close to the goal line. Now the freshman Williams in the backfield. Walker rolling out to his right. Shovels it ahead to Williams for the short gain. And again, you see that play there, Eamon. You look at that pass. To me, you got to get off your one and check it down the two earlier. There, Zaire really had the open uh, lane there to catch the ball, but he has no room to turn it up the field because he gets the ball so late out of bounds. If it's not there downfield, just get it, dump it down quick, and let that running back make a play with his legs. Sets up second and seven from the Temple 34. UCF showing pressure from the corner position. Walker sees it. High snap. Catch made. Nice move by Fitzpatrick. Another nice move. Jalen Fitzpatrick, the high school quarterback, showing some shake and bake there for a four-yard gain, brought down by Troy Gray. Harper back out there. Walker with time. Anderson wide open for a first down. Hit short of midfield. Walker continues to look for Robbie Anderson. Well, he's wide open when you're running these routes out here. And they get the stack set. He really just feeds off the receiver in front of him, finds the open space, and gets the first down. If That's the second time they run that play. If they keep giving it to him on defense, they're going to take it every time. Pickup of 12 makes it first and 10 from the Temple 49. Anderson already has five catches. Harper and Gilmore in the backfield. They run a reverse. Fitzpatrick can throw it. He's looking. He has Walker wide open, but he overshoots him. That play right there, a microcosm of Temple's season. That's the end of the first quarter. It was right there. You know, it's, it's such a shame. You see that play develop up here in the booth, and you're like, man, they got both options. Jalen could have ran. He could have threw it. And you get nervous as a receiver when you try to get around the edge here and throw that ball in the air. You gotta set your feet, throw the ball. Tough throw for Jalen, who used to be a quarterback. Tough play for Temple. Guess what I just did? I got a night pass. Night pass? Yeah, ePass is now offering night fans UCF branded toll stickers. See for yourself, my windshield now sports night black and gold. They'll certainly see you coming, but does night pass work on all toll roads in Florida? Yes. It's accepted on all toll roads in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. Go Night Pass! It's how nights travel. Score big and save more with Night Pass. Go to GetNightPass.com. GetNightPass.com. Hey, night fans, what's on your windshield? While we were away, the tale of two coaches, a rookie coach saying, come on, Jalen, we'll get the next one. Plenty of football left to be played against a veteran who's saying, I told you, fellas, this was their bowl game, and they're playing with nothing to lose. Well, you know, that, that tap on the helmet that Jalen just got was admirable, but that inner voice of Matt Rule's like, oh, man, it's like right there, another chance. We just gave it up. And really on the flip side, you look at the defense of Central Florida, that's really their season. They've come up with these plays where they've made these big turnovers, and plays like that 
teams haven't converted on. That's what's made the scoreboard, them. Scoreboard, please successful. reflect it as second yeah. down. Second down on the scoreboard. Thank you. The frustrating thing for Fitzpatrick and the Owls is, look, he can make that play. Earlier in the year at SMU, he and Robbie Anderson hooked up for about an 83 yard or so. That wasn't, you know, it's a trick play, but it's a play they can count on. Instead, it's second and 10 from the Temple 49. Williams in the backfield in the pistol. UCF jump again, they were coming. Before the snap, false start, number 23, the offense. It's a five yard penalty, second down. So it's the freshman, a little itchy in the backfield, saw the pressure coming maybe. So it's second and 15. Walker steps up in the pocket, gets hit by Mag. Pick up a five. Good job for the man that rotates in with 15, Michael Easton also. So Harper in the backfield. Fitzpatrick, bottom of your screen to the right. Walker looking over the middle, has a man wide open. Parthamore keeps his feet for the first down and then some. So the only tight end left on the depth chart. Keeps the drive alive, gathers with the tackle. He's getting his chance, and that was a great catch, great run, moving the chains for Temple. Pickup of 19, puts it at the night 32. Gilmore and Harper in the backfield, play fake. Walker steps up, looking for six, he's got his man. Touchdown, Temple, Jamie Gilmore, 32 yards. Well done. Watch P.J. Walker as he keeps his eyes. It looks like he might run here, but the vision to see the receiver get open and Jamie Gilmore, a sophomore running back, coming off the bench, doing a good job, knowing his role, is able to pull that one in. I'll tell you, that's what they needed. They needed to come back after they held that Central Florida to a field goal and score points, and they get themselves a touchdown. Not only that, after not hitting on the trick play, they don't hang their heads, they keep the drive going, and they come up with the go-ahead touchdown. Now the always adventurous kicking game for the Owls, Nick Visco looking to make it a two-point lead. And it's good. So P.J. Walker and the Owls go 82 yards in 10 plays. He hooks up with Gilmore, and the Owls have the lead on Central Florida. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag, loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. There you see Walker very efficient on the drive. Of course, the one incompletion from Fitzpatrick when he had Walker wide open, but they can laugh about that play now since they got the <laughs> touchdown anyway. I guess you can't laugh about that play. It was a good job for them, not hanging their heads, coming back. And really, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of wide receivers and players get open quickly against this UCF defense. So they're gonna have to get themselves, watch the watch the tape here and the, and the drawings and see what they can get better here in the next series. Short kick from Cooper Hall comes up for the short hop. Takes it all the way out to the UCF 39. So good hands by the wide receiver to make the grab and then return it 19 yards. So good field position again for Blake Bortles. Central Florida gets the ball back on offense. And to me, listen, you don't have that emotion, okay, that you had against a Louisville, against a Houston. You got to come out here and put drives together and run your offense. And right now, Central Florida, they find themselves down early. They got to put together a drive and get this kickstart to their offense. Trips to the right, Hall to the bottom of your screen left. Temple showing pressure. Here it comes. Bortles gets rid of it quickly, all the way out to Godfrey. Matikiewicz comes out, gets some help, and it's a loss on the play. Anthony Roby. Finishes off the job for a loss of three, but Matikiewicz coming all the way out in the flat. Well, there's a reason why he leads college football in solo tackles. He can sniff out the play, and really, Blake Bortles has got to throw a catchable ball so his receiver can get up the field quickly. There it was high, makes it easy for Temple defenders to get to the ball. Sophomore out of Stratford, Connecticut. Sets up second and 13 from the night, 36. This time they send the trips to the left. Bortles on the keeper. 
Has an alley. Gets to midfield. First down, Central Florida. Abdul Smith on the tackle, but a well-designed play. Picks up 16 yards. And there you see there, Central Florida playing from behind. Nothing new for them this season. That Memphis was another one of those trap games that they referenced this week when maybe they weren't too fired up to play the Tigers, but they pulled that one out of the fire. And then, of course, Louisville and Houston. Well, they've been resilient. It is early in this game, there's no question. But getting out to those fast starts are going to be key as they move on to this season. The freshman Williams stand back now in the backfield with Bortles, giving Johnson a break. From Temple Territory, Bortles looking for Hall, who slides down to make the catch. Hall, another productive afternoon already. That's a gain of nine. He has now caught a catch in 24 straight games. Tied for the eighth longest streak in UCF history. We saw that long run two plays ago by Blake Bortles. On that read option, someone has to cover the quarterback, and there, there was no one in sight. So I don't know if it's a strong safety, the linebacker, but they need to be in position so when he pulls that ball and runs, you're there to make the tackle. Second and one. Knights go with two tight ends and stand back in the backfield. Here is the freshman. Pushing forward for the first down. Flag on the play. It's a two-yard pickup if it stands. And it will not. Holding. Number 64 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Second down. It goes against the senior, Justin McCray. One of the three captains for the Knights, along with his twin brother, Jordan McRae, and the wide receiver, Jeff Godfrey. Standback stays out there. Wharton, top of your screen right on second and 11 from midfield. Here comes pressure. He gets rid of it to Standback, who keeps his feet. At the 35, the 20, the freshman from Long Island can run all the way to Uniondale. Touchdown, Central Florida. <laughs> 49 yards, and Temple had a shot at him in the backfield. Well, it's always nice when you can take Storm Johnson out of the game. And you have a true freshman that has the ability to make people miss, keep his balance. I love the way both of these backs run the ball. And you see there, Stanback just shows you his versatility, catching the ball out of the backfield, making a big play. And you never know with this offense, that's what makes him so good. The extra point is good. A year ago at this time, George O'Leary had no idea who William Stanback was. Now he's one of his major threats, and he just took a screen 49 yards to the end zone. Central Florida back on top. Pacifico is brewed for those who follow their own path. That's living life anchors up. William Stanback with his sixth touchdown of the season makes it a 12-7 ball game here in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's a great job. They just flip it to the outside to Stanback. And really, to me, when you, when you catch the ball and you, and you make plays, you got to be able to block players downfield. And it was a great job by his teammates to pick up those blocks. So the 17th ranked team in the BCS answers. Galvin tees it up. Gilmore who scored the touchdown for Temple back with Thomas to receive. A low one, do they it will take a UCF bounce though, so Thomas has to field it. He is met at about the 18. An eight yard return. And I talked about his teammates getting a block. Who's going to block the corner, the safety, and Medikevich here, the linebacker. When they come out, you see it here. 
J.J. Wharton comes in and cracks the linebacker. They got the two offensive linemen pulling. One gets the corner, just gets him off his point, and then at the top there, nice chop block on the strong safety. And Stanback puts the rest of work there as he runs by everyone, scores the touchdown. I gotta be honest, Anthony. I'm very impressed by your circles. Those are much neater now here uh, in November than well, the they were. Of the year. I wish they shrank them down just a little bit for me. <laughs> Walker on the rollout. Hooks up with Alderman. A lot more throwing on the run this week for Temple. It is, and you know, like you said, you don't have the block to tight end. And to me, when you can get PJ Walker out of the pocket, he becomes very dangerous because you got to hold the coverage, but yet he can drop down and run. As soon as those DBs turn and run, you can have big plays. The Owls picking up the pace. The swing pass to Fitzpatrick. He had to wait a bit to catch it, which allowed the freshman Shaquille Griffin to run him down. So not much of a gain on that one. Sets up third and five. So you want to go quickly, but you don't want to send your punter back out there too quickly. Well, you do, and if Jalen Fitzpatrick catches the ball with his hands, he's able to make that tackler miss there. He lets the ball get to his body and gives Ozerites just enough time to make that tackle. Pressure coming up the middle. Walker looking to run in the open field. The spin might have gotten him the first down. Great individual effort from the freshman. Keeps the drive alive, a pickup of six. And one of their best tacklers for UCF, Clayton Gathers, he does a great job. Now Harper looking for an alley, not much doing there. You know, Brooke mentioned the reference to watching tape of Johnny Manziel, and it was really one, two, go. One, two, go. It is, and you know, that's when you talk about a quarterback making his reads, being able to come off. And now, to, to Johnny Manziel's credit, when you're watching tape of him, his offensive line gives him about five seconds to pass the ball every time. So even though he's, if you see him in the pocket, he's bouncing around, jumping for no reason because there's nobody around him. But he's a good, uh, very good film to watch off of, of really understanding the player's routes and then when to pull it down and run. Second and nine from the Temple 30. Twins to the left. Walker with time, complete, another Temple first down, that's Alderman, a 12-yard gain. So Walker getting time in the passing game. And you see P.J. Walker now, he gets the ball to the location for the receivers to catch him. Every single time you see catchable balls, very efficient. I mean, look, guys, 14 for 16. I know it's not a lot of yardage, but just let those receivers make plays when they get on the ball. And they keep Blake Bortles and Storm Johnson off the field. First and 10 from the Temple 41. Here comes pressure up the middle. He gets rid of it. Almost intercepted. Nice coverage by Troy Gray. Just, they call this a Y Hank. The tight end comes over the ball there. But the thing he didn't do was he didn't find a defender. He just ran to a spot. You see that linebacker converging. You've got to get on him, lean on him, find him so you can get your body in front and make that catch. Good job there by Plummer, who's really done a great job in pass, pass per, uh, coverage this season. You sound like a guy who's ran Y, Hank, maybe a few million times There's in your no life. There's no question about it. I wish Chad Pennington would have thrown me some more <laughs> in New York. It would have been much better. Second and 10 from the 41. Movement all over the place. Six. False start, number 54 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty, second down. No so Matt Rules Club backed up five yards. I can't make excuses. When you're there, you know the snap count, and you're moving the football like you're doing. You're just setting your team back, and that's big, the biggest challenge for Matt Rule and his team. Second false start. It goes against Hooks, but really it looked like the center was the one who was off schedule because everyone else moved, and he, didn't, he did not snap it. Second and 15. Walker makes the first man miss, makes the second man miss, throws it to his lineman. Let's you, see if they throw a call flag on this one. Because he worked his way back into the box. This could be intentional grounding. Looking for Jacob Quinn, I guess. Michael Roach talks it over with his crew. He's digging to that pocket. There's no foul for illegal touching for it was an intentional act. Pass is incomplete, it's third down. Third and 15 for the Owls. Walker, there's a flag. So this is coming back. He's going to show off his moves and his speed. And that's All for naught. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. 
Holding number 76 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, third down. That goes against Cody Booth, as you mentioned, the former tight end. So third and 25. Let's see what Marcus Satterfield comes up with. The offensive coordinator rolls Walker out with time. Into double coverage, and Anderson goes up and gets it. Like he was back in the sandlot and Elizabeth saying, hey, just run as far as you can and I'll find you. Can they cash in, looking deep again. But behind Christopher. Robbie Anderson, you know, we talk about the emergence of Walker, but it's also the return of Anderson to the field that has helped rejuvenate this offense. Yeah, it's a great story. Obviously, in spring ball, he was playing cornerback, started to get a little homesick, wanted to go back to Florida, so coach let him out of his scholarship, sent him home, and kind of talked with his folks, came back, and decided to come back to Temple and said, listen, co coach said, we'll, we'll take you back, but we don't have that scholarship for you. And he's worked his way. First couple games he didn't play, and he's really stepped up and become a very solid player trying to earn back that scholarship, and he's on his, on his way right now to do that. Second and 10 from the 28. Walker floats it out to Harper, who makes the grab. Lowers the shoulder for a first down and a few extra yards. DJ Killings. Rides him out of bounds, a pickup of 13. You know, the last time we saw Temple was in New Jersey, and we talked about how excited the 29 players from the Garden State were, but the Florida guy's making an impact today. Well, yeah, there's no question about it. And to me, when you watch this offense, we've seen them, Eamon, make plays all year. But it's the, the, the penalties, the, the, the way they, they shoot themselves in the foot. They got to keep it clean because they got opportunities. They're in the red zone now, they got a chance to score. This is Gilmore, another one of those Sunshine State products, looking to get the edge, and he does at the 10. First down inside the five. Temple is in business. Another young player that can make big plays. And listen, this is the worst thing you can do for Central Florida is give a team like Temple confidence in a game like this. Now Temple without a tight end really here in the running game. They go wide with four wide receivers and Harper in the backfield. And Matt Rule wants a timeout. Play clock was down to four. Temple calls its first time out of the half. No question. He understands that this situation is key for them. They must find a way to get in the end zone again. We'll see what he comes up with when we return to Philadelphia. First and goal for the Owls. Welcome back to Philadelphia. While we were in break moments ago, Matt Rule, Robbie Anderson, you got to love, and this is why these players love playing for Matt Rule, the big catch by Anderson. Now a drive that started on the Temple 18. 12th play will be first and goal from the three. Zaire Williams in the backfield. So interesting, it's not Harper. And they give it to Williams, and that's why. They could have gave it to him or kept it decides to keep it. I'll tell you what, momentum is building. Can they continue to do it for four quarters? It's a simple read option here. And he had both. But P.J. Walker said, listen, it's my turn. You guys get all the love. I want to score a touchdown. I guess it really didn't matter. Both could have scored. You got to give credit to Marcus Satterfield and this offensive coaching staff. Everything they're pl they're coming up with has been working. Some very creative plays in both the passing and the run game, and now Visco. Even the extra points are going through for Temple, so you know some good things are happening with this football team. I'll give it to you next time. Is I think <laughs> what he said, right? But George O'Leary warned us. He warned his players. He warned the Orlando media that this is a Temple ball club that is better than its stats, better than its record, and will be playing for its season 
against the 17th ranked team in the BCS. Can they play a clean game for four quarters? This team is young, they're inexperienced, but as you can see, they have playmakers. They have the players that what it takes to make these plays and keep the game in hand. It's just, can they do it for the entire game? We'll see today. You know, as we got ready, to, as we prepared to do this broadcast, we were like, where is Blake Bortles in the conversation and quarterbacks in the country and in this conference? So much talk about Teddy Bridgewater. Well, P.J. Walker, not there yet, obviously, well, just a true freshman, but he's working his way into the conversation. I'll tell you, you talk about the American Conference now. They got some of the top quarterbacks and some of the young ones, too. Like you said with P.J. Walker, you talk about Teddy Bridgewater. You got Brandon Kay over in Cincinnati, Gary Nova, a lot of really good players that can lead teams and win a lot of games. Another short kick that Hall has to come up and make a grab out to about the 33, but there is a flag on the play. 15-yard return, but they will most likely be backed up here. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist, number 41 of the return team. It's a 15 yard penalty, first down. First and 10, Storm Johnson back in the backfield with Bortles. This is Hall in motion. They give it to Johnson who has a convoy. First down and more, stays in bounds. The 40, the 30. The 10 finally pushed out of bounds by Zamel Johnson. 73-yard pickup if it stands, and it looks like it will. Here it is. The ruling on the field is that the runner stepped out the eight-yard line. Right there is that. That play is under review. Is, is the bottom, is that heel out of bounds? Is it on the ground? Again, indisputable video evidence has to be seen to overturn the call. It's the right foot. That's in. That's in bounds. I see green there. I see green. Now the referees, if we keep it rolling, we're talking about stepping out at the eight. Well, that's at the end. At the end, but that's at the end. This is the me, this is what they're gonna look at. The overhead makes it look out of bounds. The other angle looks like there's you see separation green and white. These great angles we got. I love it. Our replay official Jack Kramer, the communicator, Mark McEnany. No got, relation, I but I had to say, give him some pub. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be first and goal, UCF. So a 73-yard run by Storm Johnson, who started his collegiate career at Miami. And there you see his parents making the trip from Loganville, Georgia. Let's go, guys. Show Felt a little bit homesick down there at Miami. Yeah. Wanted to yeah, move man. closer to home. His parents making the trip to Philadelphia. And what a great weekend it is to make a trip here to Philadelphia. Love, love those T-shirts. Storm chasers. I love it. <laughs> Chasing their son. So now Central Florida knocking on the door to regain the lead. First and goal from the eight. Back to Storm after the break. Change of directions. Touchdown, but there is a flag. Running backs hate seeing that. Holding number 63 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. So now both Captain McCrae's yeah. half calls go against them. I'm, I'm real. Senior lineman there, Senior left guard, 63, just holding on. Well, at least we know who he's holding on as a good tackler. Medikavich is a guy that probably would have got there if he didn't hold on. But again, pushes him back now. This, this gives Temple a little bit of life here. Pushes them back 10 more yards. So the 73-yard run that set Central Florida up in business here was a career long for Storm Johnson. So now he gets a break. Stand back, back out there. Bortles on the keeper. Inside the 10, and he slides. No flag on the hit. Completely fooled Blaze Capanegro. Two guys just flying in. When you have a running back that runs as good as Storm Johnson, you're going to have to, really, that fake is going to be sold every time. And Blake pulled it out, got himself some nice yardage. And again, now, Temple's defense, they actually excel 
when it gets into closer to the goal line. So let's see if they can hold them here on second and third down. Second and goal from the nine. Stand back, the lone back. Godfrey and Hall to the left. Wharton, top of your screen right. Here's the freshman who has one already. Gets inside the five, so that'll set up third and goal. You got a quarterback who can run. You got Stanback who knows how to get to the end zone. What are you dialing up? Well, to me, I'd like to see my quarterback make a play here again. He makes very good decisions when, he get, when he's given that opportunity. But here's an opportunity now. Temple's defense gives up the long run. They get it down towards the goal line. And they put themselves in another situation where it's third and goal. Can they hold this team to a field goal? No tight ends. Trips to the left. Stand back in the backfield. Hall, top of your screen. Temple showing blitz. Here comes Matikiewicz. Bortles throws it up. And Wharton goes and gets it. Touchdown number five on the season for number nine. Just runs a simple corner route. And Zamil Johnson's there. You got to turn and find the ball. And because of the fact that ball's up early in the air, only the receiver sees it. Great job by those two being on the same page. Moffitt remains perfect in extra points. So Blake Bortles. And the Knights answer with a four-play, 81-yard drive, but obviously most of the work being done by Storm Johnson on that one run. Central Florida stumbles down the road. You're right, you did see, you saw those four teams we just showed you in the conference, and really those teams might be close to nine or 10 wins apiece heading into the end of the season. This is Thomas, and those, score, those records will, of course, change later tonight. A big one between Houston and Louisville. And you kind of get the feeling that Louisville, still playing with a chip on its shoulder, kind of feel like everyone's forgotten about them. Well, you know, I don't think anybody's really forgotten about them. But really, when you look at the conference, per se, you know, you have to win all your games to keep yourself in that, in that mix. And even if some reason Central Florida stumbled, they still have the head-to-head -head against Louisville. So it became really an issue for them after they lost that game to Central Florida. Should be interesting to see how the Cougars can bounce back emotionally after having four chances at hmm. the 10 last Saturday against the Knights. So now, uh, four lead changes already today. It's P.J. Walker's turn to answer Central Florida. They start out of the pistol. Another rollout. Another wide open receiver. Fitzpatrick with the grab across the 40. Out near midfield. Gathers throws him out of bounds, but the 29-yard pickup and Temple's executing, but these plays are wide open. You gotta be impressed with P.J. Walker, folks. If you're watching this game, this kid's a true freshman. Great touch pass, and sometimes you see quarterbacks, it's a deep ball, and they throw too hard, and they don't have touch. The kid has multiple throws in his repertoire, really showing the skill off today. Already 17 for 22 for over 200 yards. Dangerous pass. That looked like one he should have tucked away and ran with. There's no question I was going to say that before he threw it and yelled down to the young man, take that ball and run. You see the first option's not there, the second option, don't force it. So he lives to play another down here, second and 10 from the Temple 49. Anderson, top of your screen, they back off him. Now he runs it across midfield. First down, Ozerites brings him down. A pickup of 15. We were watching a lot of tape of P.J. Walker recently. That move looked like some of those moves he had on that one run against SMU when he made about three guys miss. And then the short pitch and catch over the middle is complete for a gain of six. Tyler Kropinski. So another wide receiver gets in the box score. Yeah, Matt Rule's not afraid and scared to throw anybody out there. I mean, he's got a lot of young players. He's going to play them. So we have Terrence Plummer banged up. He is one of the leaders of this defense. He was the man in coverage on fourth and goal when John O'Corn was looking for Deontay Greenberry last week. Karpinski catches that with the helmet and then he runs into his own teammate. Looks like he collides with Mag. So nine different receivers now have caught passes from that man. Second and four. This Temple ball club does not go away. They stack the receivers to the left. Walker sees the pressure coming from up the middle. 
Another catch by Anderson, makes the first man miss in the open territory. Gets wow. by his man. Does he stay in bounds? Touchdown, Owls! Folks. 30 yards. If it stands, will they review to see if he went out of bounds? But what a move after the catch. Said, look at that whip, and it's all about making guys miss. When you get the ball in your hands, can you score? In, in, touchdown. Wow. That's, I'll tell you what. A kid played a cornerback in the spring, and now he's their best receiver a couple months later. Impressive. Great first move. Still in. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. That play is under review. Let's see here. Shaquille Griffin. Trying to just nudge him out. Again, I think the heel's in the air. I don't think it's touching on the white. The call on the field, which is always the important part, is a touchdown. It's a great job, man. So I think that's going to stand. So if it does, it'll be our fifth lead change already here in the first half as they answer in five plays. That's the close one right there. Well, it's got to be indisputable. We yeah, can't I don't see it. Whether or not he's touching that, that sideline, unless we have that, that sideline view, and we can't see it quite. You know, Anthony, another interesting part about Anderson's return to the team as we continue to take a look at this, remember, he left as a cornerback. <laughs> when he returned, they really didn't have a spot for him, and the defensive coaches were like, well, sure, we could use him. The offensive coach was like, yeah, 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 give, we need we'll him. We'll start we him. Need him. Yeah, we'll yeah, start said, him. We're going to start him, so he's ours. <laughs> My answer was like, why not just play them both ways? Uh, you know, you make a great point. Uh, P.J. Walker throws to his ninth different receiver in this game so far. And we asked him yesterday, you said, who's your favorite receiver? And he's like, well, you know, I like this guy, that guy. And Coach uh, Satterfield, the office coordinator, said, listen, he doesn't have a favorite guy. And that's a good thing because that means he's going to go through his progressions. And whoever's open, he's going to give him the ball. And when you're hitting nine different guys and have trust, that means you're going through your progressions and finding the receiver that's open. I'll tell you, this kid is taking leaps and bounds every single game he plays. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchdown for Temple. So Anderson now has seven catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. And look, Anthony, I've never coached defense in my life, but he does not look to me like a cornerback at all. He's yeah. straight out a wide receiver to my eyes. I'll tell you what now. If he was good enough to even be thought of as a cornerback, he might be one versatile player that's on this field today. So now Visco out to make it three for three on the extra points. And that is perfect. 2.13 left to play in the Temple Faithful buying into this team, the players buying into Matt Rule despite 1 and 8 winless in the conference. Finish playing four quarters. The hardest thing for a young team is they get all jumpy, get emotional, they got the lead. But this UCF team, trust me, they're not phased, they're not worried about it. They've been down, trust me, a lot more than two points before. They're going to continue to make their plays. Can Temple continue to hang around? And despite the perfect record in league play, they have been in dogfights. Again, we mentioned the Memphis game. That was a classic trap game that they pulled out of the fire thanks to stand back on special teams and a late drive led by Bortles. Another short kick. Hall catches it in full sprint. And they hang on for dear life. Avery Williams, the linebacker, hangs on for the tackle. So 2.08 left to play in the half. Well, we talked about Blake Bortles being the man. Now, he hasn't had the ball that much. But when he has, five of those seven completions are touchdowns. But my man, P.J. Walker, we knew they were going to pass today. But he has looked impressive. Folks, true freshmen. Circle that, know that, hear that. This kid's... Leaps and bounds, doing things on the field above his time right now. Again, Temple knew they were going to have to pass the ball. So far, Central Florida has not had to put it up in the air that often. And a productive day from Johnson and Stanback. But now pressure, and they get to him. Hershey Walton with the sack. Second of the afternoon for the Owls. They're not the most athletic on the blitzes, but when they get their chance, they got to make a big stop. They did it there. Second and long now. It's going to be tough 
for this offense. That is definitely the one thing this defense has worked on the most since that Rutgers game. Now Bortles looking for Hall down the sidelines, and he cannot come up with a tremendous grab. So now third and long, Tavon Young in good coverage. And Hall still down on the sidelines after extending, looking to make that grab. The individual drills in practice, so it looks like he will play again. Hopefully we will say the same for Rennell Hall. We will be back to Philadelphia with an update after this. This isn't just a beer. It's a lager, a medium-bodied, amber-colored, one-of-a-kind beer made from those bold enough to brew it for those bold enough to drink it. Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. So a good sign here for Central Florida and Rennell Hall as he is up and on his feet and walking off. Just stopped by and had a quick conversation with the head coach, George O'Leary. So we will have an update on his condition. But now back to the action. Third and 13 here. Tyler Matikiewicz, who has become undoubtedly the leader of this defense. A stop here with 126 left to play and two timeouts would be huge for the Owls. But the last time we said that, Bortles kept it himself and gained the first down. So, so many weapons and things you have to stop. Well, you know, Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, is going to have to make these adjustments now when they're running that read option with the QB and running back. Well, the key thing here is now no haul. So what does that mean for Bortles? Well, you're right. I mean, Bortles obviously shrinks down his confidence level to the receivers that he's comfortable with. And a timeout, I don't Temple think Temple really wanted to take. Out of the half. And you sort of see that in the body language of Coach Rule. But obviously, if you don't like the alignment you're in, you have to take it. Listen, young players on defense, they've torched you with a couple explosive plays. Let's make sure we get it right. It's third. It'll be a 30-second timeout. It's third and 13. There's a minute 26 left. You're up by a few points. Let's not give up a big play here where they, UCF gets the momentum in at halftime. Let's get it right, set the tempo, and try to get a stop. And you saying that reminds me completely of how the Rutgers game ended on fourth and 10 when <laughs> they're in blitz, Phil Snow dials up the blitz, and for some reason, the secondary thinks they're impressed. Next thing you know, Nova to Carew, ball game Rutgers. You're right, they were supposed to be in off coverage at fourth and 10, the DBs don't get the uh, call. And they end up getting beat one-on-one -on -one on the outside for the game-winning touchdown. So now Bortles with time. Now he's forced out of the pocket. Walton can't get to him. He's still alive. Extending the play. Is he in bounds? Incomplete. J.J. No. Wharton. He's saying he had, they're saying bobbled it. The right foot looked in, but they're saying he never had possession. We'll have to see that. He's fighting it. He George O'Leary lobbying, certainly. Great. Play by Bortles to extend the play. Again, the thing is possession. They said he was bobbling. It looks like the ball's moving slightly, but he's still not out of bounds yet. I think there he has control. UCF calls his first time out of the half. UCF takes a 30-second timeout. UCF takes a timeout to make Jack Kramer get all the looks he can. To me, it looks like Wharton catches the ball. It does bobble initially, but his other foot is still not touching out of bounds yet. You see here, he has the ball. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. UCF is challenging that review. But the right, but by the time he has possession, the right foot seems to be off the ground. Is that in bounds or not? Because the left foot's right. coming down on the white. Again, on the field, the call's incomplete. I think that's going to be tough to overturn, but to your point, it's, yeah, it is. I mean, I think you can see it there. If you see it right here, it's our best shot. Again, the foot's down. Foot's it's in. Inbounds. He's bobbling it there. When does he have possession? There. I think that's a catch. The tippy I mean, toes are in. Dragon. It looks like he's pulling the ball down towards his body. So with that motion and a toe being on the ground, I think they might have enough indisputable evidence to overturn that. Jack Kramer has his work cut out for him on this one. A critical call, obviously. You don't need that. Repeated here. That's repeating the obvious. And 
You see there the ruling on the field incomplete pass. When did he have possession. Yeah. Storm Johnson obviously thinks he has a 50 inch vertical trying to jump up for that but <laughs> that reminds me of the game winning touchdown against Louisville but exactly. uh, to me I think there's going to be enough evidence it looks good there I mean uh, to me uh, that's got to be a lonely feeling for Matt rule but he kind of I think he's sensing that his defense needs to stay back out there. Great effort by Wharton to drag that foot. And you see George O'Leary saying catch. So now we just need the verdict to become official. <laughs> now they're probably arguing, discussing the spot. But with two timeouts left and Blake Bortles, a huge opportunity now for George O'Leary. After review. The ruling on the field is a completed catch at the 48-yard line of UCS. It'll be UCS ball, first down and 10 yards to go. They will not be charged a timeout. So there you have it. And that's a significant play now because they're still with one minute, 15 seconds left. This extends the drive and potentially puts them in a scoring opportunity before the half. So it's a 15-yard pickup. They now have their full complement of timeouts, as you heard Michael Roach explain, and it's first and ten. And again, they have an excellent field goal kicker as well, but right now Bortles is thinking six. There's a catch by Reese, who sits down literally in the zone. Four-yard pickup, and there is Moffitt warming up. Last week he said he could hit from 50, he could hit from 50, he got blocked from 50. George O'Leary says, I'm never asking him again. Here comes pressure. They throw right into it. Catch made by Godfrey. Matikiewicz brings him down short of the first down. As George O'Leary takes the timeout, he does. UCF calls its first time out of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. So a huge play now here at third and three from the 44, which is right in that range where Moffitt was blocked last week if they don't get it. So you got Johnson and Stanback. What do you think Coach O'Leary and Grant Charlie Taffer thinking about? Well, you got you got 51 seconds. You do have a uh, you still have two timeouts left. You can, you do have that option, you know, to run a read option with the quarterback and the running back. You've had some good plays with that already, and you've got Temple on their heels now because they're, they're thinking playing the pass, and you have those options. You even have the, the pass option off the read, so maybe that's the time now where they fake the read option and throw a quick pass to the wide receiver. We have already had five lead changes in the half. Central Florida looking to make it six with 51 seconds left in the half. Temple backs off the blitz. Now it comes. Incomplete, dude, and there's the flag, the nudge in the back, an easy call. against Al one pass interference number 14 of the defense it's a spot foul automatic first down you know to me Al one's in position there really just play the ball there's no reason to knock the receiver down especially the fact that he doesn't even know the balls in the air yet so if you see the receiver you know they got to get a short down Turn your eyes back to the quarterback and use your peripheral vision. Before they snap it here, a reminder to our local affiliates, our next break will be break number nine. Now first and ten from the 41. Pressure on Bortles. He gets hit. It's Alwan with redemption. Hershey Walton causing havoc as well. Third UCF sack of the afternoon. Second time out of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. Well, they run across, dog. Hershey opens it up for him. Alwan gets in and applies a big hit on Blake. He obviously felt, felt that one a little bit, shaking him up. Coach Rule and Phil Snow yesterday telling us blitzing is a mindset. Well, the players have that mindset here this afternoon. Well, he talked about working on the blitz, and they had two weeks to do it. And they said, we have to get better 
on our blitz packages because he said we're not that athletic. So we got to make sure we're on point. We take good angles and early in this game. These young men have answered the bell on their blitz packages against Central Florida. But now on second and 16 with them not really in field goal position. Do you back off? <laughs> well you know what it's it's give or take to me you got to bring an extra rusher in my opinion. And another timeout Phil Snow not happy at all that he had to burn that one. Temple calls its final timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. When they took the last time out we were thinking about well, getting time back getting given P.J. Walker time now it's just lining up right. I can tell you why he's mad he's yelling at his strong safety there and I, I think they want to disguise coverage and they just got into that cover too. I think maybe they wanted to come down and show a different coverage and then fall back into it. So that to me is a sign of a defensive coordinator a little upset about where his players position was. Why was that so important to him yesterday? He kept stressing, we have to disguise, we have to disguise. Well, when you're going against a guy like Blake Bortles, he's so smart. And if you can do anything to really get him off his play and his adjustments, you can really pull players out, move linebackers, and disguise different things just to make it difficult, even though he's such a good player. Central Florida feels it has to get to the 30 to give Moffitt a chance. They dump it off, and a big hit there by Avery Williams. Limits it to a two yard gain, so now it's third and 14. UCF calls its final timeout of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. Well, defensively, that's a great job. To me, Temple's got to make them earn everything. And when you're in position to make the play, make the tackle, they have guys in the right spots right now. They're blitzing well, the pressures are good, and they're making tackles. Can they hang on for another play here so they can go into halftime with this lead? Well, let me ask you this on the flip side. Will they have to hang on for another play? You're George O'Leary, you're at the 45. You're out of timeouts. Temple's out of timeouts. Do you risk a sack and a fumble or a pick six, or do you just run the ball? You know what, I think he has confidence in his quarterback to go out there and make the right decisions for this team. To me, I think you stay aggressive. You got 34 seconds, you don't have any timeouts left, but if you can get into field goal range, spike the ball down, you can get three points. To me, I think you stay aggressive here. You got a guy that can do it. Moffitt two for two on anything from 40 to 49 yards. He has hit a 50 yarder, but he also had a 50 yarder blocked a week ago. Bortles with time has a man at Wharton again. He kept the drive alive by staying in bounds, and there he makes another key grab over the middle for 17 yards. So now they're in business for a field goal. They will spike it here, you would think. Please. Is he a veteran enough to pull off the fake? No, they. I'll tell you what, he looked like he was going to run out of the place. Storm Johnson was the one saying, spike it, spike it, spike it, getting the call from the sidelines. It's one of my pet peeves. It is. I, I got to see that spike. You don't have any timeouts left. Spike the football and give yourself some time. So he has 24 seconds left. They are in field goal range now to give Moffitt a crack at about a 45, 46 yarder. Again, they're going to stay aggressive. If they get a touchdown here, they're going to go for it. Temple showing pressure. It backs away. They still get to Bortles, who throws it long and out, out of bounds. Too high for Reese. Good coverage by Young. Again, they're in field goal range now. Try to get a couple completions, maybe get closer. You take a shot to the end zone. But again, doesn't hurt you there. You stop the clock on a high throw. Third down. If he gets sacked, can they get Moffitt out there? Probably not no, with 19 probably not, seconds. Yeah. That, that's so you would look easy. for the quick release, I would imagine. Maybe a quick dump off in the screen game. Does Phil Snow dial up a blitz one more time on third and 10 from the 28? Central Florida already in field goal range. Here comes the heat. Bortles gets away. Does Wharton make another grab? Wow. Yes, he does. The J.J. Wharton show continues. That looked harder to see, and the referees say it's a catch. Now Temple doesn't have a timeout to make the officials think about it and take a look at it. But it looks like they're going to do it on their own. And there you see Zamel Johnson slow to get up, unable to get up. So 11 seconds left. Ball is Great at job. the 18. Great job keeping his feet in, catching the ball with his hands. Staying in bounds. Ruling on the field is reception for a first down. Hey. 
That play is under further review. You know, this receiving core, when we saw Charlie Taff a couple of weeks ago, he laughed when I called it deep. I guess I should have said talented and versatile because he said I only have four or five guys. Well, now they're down to about three. But when you have guys who can make grabs like that, now, again, you're talking about possession and when. When and where. That's going to be tough to overturn. Great focus. Really knowing where you are. That's the biggest thing as a wide receiver. Know where you're on the field. Understand where the out of bounds is. Making sure that when you catch the ball, it's clean. And putting that all together. It's also a tremendous throw to make sure he's the only guy who can get his hands on it. There's no doubt. If he drops it or misses it, ball goes out of bounds. It stops the clock. And they're right back at, at, at their spot on the 28 to kick that field goal. But, you know, you got 11 seconds, okay? So right now you take a shot in the end zone. You be smart. Run something that can get there. You don't want to throw a ball that's short of the end zone. The clock keeps running, ticking. So if, they're, if they get this, continue to be a completed pass, that's what they have to think about on this next play. They're taking their time. This has not been a slam dunk confirmation. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It'll be a first down for UCF. So the J.J. Wharton highlight reel has another one. He has five catches this afternoon for 59 yards. Now, how many cracks does George O'Leary get to the end zone with Bortles? 11 seconds left, no timeouts. One sack and the half is over. It's me, take one chance. And I, you know, hesitant to work the middle of the field. I would rather throw something to the corner, a corner route, a crossing route to hit the backside of the end zone so you stay out of the middle field and all that trouble. I think you got to go end zone because even the clock play you might not have enough time for. Bortles looking for six. Godfrey almost came up with a great catch. At first I thought he was turning into a defensive back and then he got his both hands on it, but Tavon Young in coverage and they will send out the kicking team with three seconds left you know what he was being a defensive back there because that coverage was tight the ball was hanging in the air he had to come back around and really be a defender here but look at that really could have been a great catch oh so close so moffitt has hit from 20 this will be from 35. for our sixth lead change in the first 30 minutes of football bullseye What a half so far. What a That's drive for J.J. Wharton. There's three tremendous catches, and Matt Rule's club heads to the locker room down by one against the 17th-ranked team in the BCS. Back and forth, first half of football here in Philadelphia. Central Florida with a last-second field goal. Back on top. Let's send it down to Brooke Weisbrod. Thank you. Well, Coach, you knew this was going to be a hard game. Give me a sense of, of how tough this Temple team has been in the first half. Well, we just haven't played well on defense. Too many plays, too many missed assignments on defense. We've got to get that corrected at halftime. And, and then come out and, hey, Temple's playing well. we got to start matching those things defensively and offensively. How do you do that? We're going to get some adjustments made, straighten out some of the defensive problems we're having. Thank you. So George O'Leary knew he was facing a motivated team that would treat this game as a bowl game, and it has been as advertised. P.J. Walker and Blake Bortles going back and forth. That's the end of the first half. We'll return with our American Game of the Week halftime report from Philadelphia after these messages. For young people, education can be a guiding light through any circumstance, providing a path to achieve their dreams. The Florida Lottery proudly supports the Bright Future Scholarship Program, which recognizes excellence in students. It helps them shine so that they can have brighter tomorrows. Six lead changes in the first half. The Knights able to go on a late drive thanks to three outstanding catches by J.J. Wharton. That set up a go-ahead field goal. And now Storm Johnson and Blake Bortles and that Knight offense 
will get first crack here in the third quarter. There's one thing you can bank on, that George O'Leary and his halftime adjustments and his team will be ready for the second half. The question mark is the Achilles heel for Temple. They have stressed coming out in the second half and playing ball, playing four quarters, but they've yet to do that this season. This will be Stanback who has to go back to the two to get it. Run into his left, hit at the 15, upended at about the 17, and a late flag. So a 16-yard return, but that flag came flying from midfield. Dondi Kirby had the tackle that slowed him up. Let's see what the call is. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 34, the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So that'll back up the Knights. Let's check in with Brooke Weisbro down on the field. Well, before I heard Temple come out of the locker, or before I saw him, I heard Temple. They were so loud and full of energy, you guys. They came out, and it was even hard to hear Matt rule. I said, you've been telling us you've been this close to winning games all season long. What's been the difference? And he said, we just got to make one more play, but this is the most fun we've had all season. He also credited Marcus Satterfield for the kind of plays he's been drawing up for P.J. Walker to get him in his comfort zone. Good to see Rennell Hall back on the field, running the jet sweep. One thing I can attest to, Eamon, is when teams are getting rowdy, coming out of the tunnel, they're getting all fired up, that's all fine and dandy. But when you get onto that football field and it's time to snap the football, you got to go out there and make plays. Finish has got to be the word that was stressed in the Temple's locker room. Let's see if they can hang around, because I promise you this, Central Florida is going to come strong in the second half. So Hall picks up 11 in the first down, first and 10 from the 18. Wardles. Back to Hall. Good tackle in space by Young. Six yard pickup. So again, Hall after lunging out to make the catch down the sidelines, had to leave the game. You see Blake Bortles day, so he obviously likes to have number six back in the huddle, one of his main weapons. He's been efficient. He only had the ball a few times. Just Temple's had the longer drives, but when he's been in there, and had the ball, they've made plays. Second and four. This is Johnson. Bottled up, looking to spit his way out of it. Matikiewicz, the first man there. It's a one yard gain, so now third and three. And if there's any advantage for Temple's defense with their offense having long drives is that you know, UCF is moving the ball so fast, they haven't really been able to establish that run game that they want to have, even though they're making big plays Got to get guys off the ground running like Storm Johnson and William Stanback so you can run the fall, run the ball, and really get a drive that you can put together to take time off the clock and, and, and be balanced. Does Phil Snow bring pressure? On third and three from the night 25. Stanback on the screen, they get it to him. Hit short of the first down, but the extra effort, it's all about the spot. Storm Johnson made the grab. Alwyn had a shot. It's going to be close. Young, young as well. That looks short from up here. George O'Leary keeping his offense out there. Opening possession of the third quarter here. Fourth and one. You got a running back named Storm and a big quarterback. Why not? Popolo in there as well. Bortles on the wow. sneak. It's going to be up to the referee. I'll tell you, this is uh, he jumped up, but he got Met with contact on that leap. The old right foot, left foot. Yeah, which one is he going to pick? First down, they're not even measuring. So a new set of downs, first and 10 from the 29. Hall top of your screen left, Johnson in the backfield. Looking for Hall over the middle, in the open field. Out to the 48. Brought down by Caponegro. And Abdul Smith puts it there and lets him make a play almost out the shoot for a score. That looked like he clapped, like I'm open, throw it now. Like you think they're on the same page? Now Johnson up the middle, gets across midfield, brought down by Caponegro, gain of four. And you saw it took four downs on that previous 
series there to, to get the first down. Make them earn it. Temple's defense, make Central Florida earn it. Don't give up the big explosive plays to give yourself a chance to hold them to a field goal if they do put together a drive. Johnson now, there you see his stats. Quietly, right? At well, the 73 yards. yard run helps when he went down the sidelines. Did a great job of tiptoeing to keep himself in bounds all the way down to the eight yard line. They give it back to him. He pushes the pile head for a short gain. We'll call it two. So another third down here for Bortles and the Knights. Hassan Reddick in on the play. Third and four from the Temple 47. Well, they went for it in their own territory, so obviously I'm going to say four down territory. Reese, bottom of your screen right, twins to the left. Hall and Godfrey. Bortles lofts it down the sideline, but Johnson cannot bring it in. That looked like. Bortles was going to make a big play out of a busted play. There is a flag down in midfield. An eligible receiver downfield will be the call. An eligible downfield, number 55 of the offense. The penalty is declined, fourth down. Tremendous effort by Bortles to avoid the rush after the busted play and get the pass off, but Johnson can't make the tremendous catch, but instead it's Houston out to punt on fourth and four. Alderman with the fair catch at the nine. So the Temple defense comes up with the stand on the first possession. Watching Knights Rewatch presented by Dex Imaging. Do business better. Now back to UCF football. You know, with all the big plays we had in the first half, it's easy to overlook that maybe the most pivotal play of that first half was the safety that gave yes. UCF two points, and then the field position led to three more on the field goal. So now Walker, I don't know if that was hit at the line, but a low throw to Fitzpatrick. So that'll make it second and 10. There's a look at Jim Fleming, the defensive coordinator for the Knights. And the baseball cap in the middle. He and Coach O'Leary probably had a conversation after that <laughs> interview with Brook about defense and assignments. Harper in the backfield. UCF showing pressure. Walker, though, with time, looking deep down the sideline and almost intercepted. Mag doing a good job of turning around. Temple faithful looking for a crap of a flag. But I thought Mag turned around and played it well. Then you go back to Coach Rule lobbying early for a holding call. Maybe the right hand might have had some jersey, but it looked clean from up here on third and ten now. Walker, pressure coming. He steps up. Throws it high, and that almost intercepted. Gathers couldn't bring it in. Great job by the secondary safeties there. Gaithers Alexander being in the position to knock that one down. Second punt of the afternoon by Leighton. The first one was buried inside the five. Don't think this one will be that successful, but a good high kick. Wharton with the fair catch at the UCF 45. The Owls get ready to play Clemson down in South Carolina. So now they go Wildcat. Godfrey in the backfield gives it to Stanback and Temple ready for it. Caponegro with penetration. One player came out of his shoe. Let's see who it is. It's Stanback. So he'll have to come off the field. Storm Johnson back on. But Godfrey, obviously, if you follow this program, you know he started his career as a quarterback, was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year, leading the Knights to a bowl game. Then Blake Bortles emerged. 
But they have run this package. They had success with it against Penn State and Connecticut, but now Bortles back out there. Yeah, he actually was going to leave. He was going to leave school transfer, but he's bought into this role at the wide receiver position and become a weapon for these guys. More importantly, also, he's become a captain. So buying in, Bortles avoids the pressure and has a first down and a little bit more as Abdul Smith brings him down in Temple territory. Again, the versatility. Now, Blake Bortles doesn't have the P.J. Walker type speed, but he can get and do just as much damage with his legs as P.J. does. And you see there, he keeps his eyes down the field all the time, but he's able to pick up that first down, and that's so big for quarterbacks now at that position. The 12-yard gain sets up the Knights at the Temple 42. Stand back, back out there. Lone back. And he has it running to the right. With an alley, lowering the shoulder into Smith, near a first down, right at the chain. And it is indeed a 10-yard pickup for the first down. All bottom of your screen now in motion. They give it to stand back to the right. He has the first down across inside the 30. Stand back, such a great recruiting story. You know, so much attention now being given to recruits. As I mentioned earlier, a year ago at this time, George O'Leary, even though he's a Long Island native, really had no idea who William Standback was. He really only had one legitimate offer. That was from Doug Marone and Syracuse. When Doug Marone went to the Bills, Syracuse really wasn't a fit. So one of his assistant coaches at Uniondale High School Played at Syracuse when George O'Leary was an assistant coach there. He called George O'Leary late in the recruiting process, about a week before signing day. And now here's Stanback, a major weapon, as they look for the deep ball. And it's another great catch by J.J. Wharton. J.J. Warren having a day today, six catches, and I think, Eamon, I don't know if any of them have been easy <laughs> this entire game. Again, three crucial ones on that late first half drive that gave Central Florida a chance for the lead. Now Stanback down to about the two. What a luxury it must be for George O'Leary and the offensive coaches to have Johnson and then followed up by Stanback, who is a big young man at 5'11", 205, a load. Yeah, you're right, and his recruiting story is great. I mean, when he came in, he wasn't even on their 10, top 10 list of the guys that were in their, uh, in their class coming in, so he's really just jumped up the charts and, and really could easily be the starting tailback for this team if Storm Johnson wasn't in the play. And maybe his most important play was on special teams against Memphis when he jarred the ball loose on the kickoff return. Does he work hard enough to get in? It looks like the Owls deny him one more play. So that'll set up third and goal. But we talked about it. Temple loves playing defense down when they're by the goal line for some reason. So teams have moved the ball, but they've been very feisty and fighting down there when they get the ball close to the goal line. Big defensive play here to see if they can make a stand. A lot, a lot of weight moving forward on this offensive line and this running back position. It'd be tough to stop them here. Two tight ends with Popolo out there. That's Popolo in motion. Bortles keeps it on the sneak. No signal yet. Be short. Well, it'll be fourth and goal from the one. Wow. You went for it on your own 25-yard line to try to get a first down. Listen, Temple knows what's coming. UCF knows what's coming. Let's see if he can get up. Marked inside the one. He keeps it, Bortles. Looking to throw into the back of the end zone. Incomplete! Very surprised on that play call there. So George O'Leary chooses a pass on fourth down. He does not get it. The Owls take over down by one. UCF, our Knights. Since 1970, UCF student athletes have represented Orlando with pride. Today, Masson Sandwiches honors them with the Knights Sandwich. Your choice of roast beef, turkey, or chicken with sauteed peppers, onions, and melted Swiss cheese. Three delicious combinations, one awesome sandwich. And for every Knights Sandwich sold, Masson Sandwiches will donate $1 to UCF Athletics. Come to the taste. Come to Masson. 
Famous Sandwiches, Anytime Breakfast, Serious Coffee. Now, earlier in the year in the same situation, Matt Rule let P.J. Walker throw it deep against Cincinnati, but that was intercepted, and it led to points for the Bearcats. So he's tried the passing game. He's tried to run it out. Now he has Kenneth Harper in the backfield. Almost a near safety again. I think P.J. Walker. DeAndre Barnett got close. Almost forgot where he was there because it looked like he slightly was going to tuck it and try to make a play, but thankfully he was able to get the ball out of, out of his hands before the defender got to him. Jim Fleming, a product of the Upper East Side in New York City, and you don't see too many defensive coordinators come out of that neighborhood, but he has done a tremendous job with this unit this year. Now Walker with time over the middle. Nice catch by Fitzpatrick. You know, with Central, so much success for Central Florida, you might overlook just how much work they've done with this defense, because back at the beginning of the year, there were tons of questions about sp specifically the secondary, but in general, how the defense would hold up. Yeah, you're right. They only had a few starters coming back from last year's team. And we talked to them earlier in the season, and defense coordinator Jim Flame was like, listen, you know, we're not quite confident yet. You know, the guys aren't playing that good a brand of football, but they're making big splash plays, turnovers when they need them, and that's what's been so successful for them this season. Now looking for a three and out to flip the field. Walker flips it ahead to Harper, who makes the grab and holds on to it despite the big hit from Mag. But improvising by both the QB and the running back leads to an 18-yard gain. Keeping your eyes downfield. Really great awareness by P.J. Walker. Getting around and just getting that ball off before he crosses the line. How about the concentration by Kenny Harper? Does a great job of catching that football. Anderson can't bring that one in. Gathers with a big hit. From the 25. Tight formation. Play fake to Williams. Looking deep for Anderson. He throws it deep. Gathers can't get his hands on it. And Anderson behind the defense. The 10, the 5, touchdown Temple. The Owls go back on top. The freshman to the former cornerback for 75 yards. Big play for Temple there. And really, Gethers is there. Robbie's just going to fake like he's going to block the safety, runs to the corner, and Clayton Gathers just mistimes this jump. And Robbie Anderson says, listen, you're coming down. I'm rising up. He catches that ball, takes it 75 yards. Huge play for Temple. Visco. He remains on fire. Anderson, eight catches for 184 yards, two touchdowns. Temple back on top. And we'll rise up. I like the waves. We'll rise up. In spite of the ache, we'll rise up. And we'll do it a thousand times again. You, you. I'll tell you, well, we still got another quarter and a half here, but still, when you look at it right now, this Temple team's hanging around. They're always dangerous. Never let a team like Temple hang around in games. That means so much for this Central Florida team. The short kick strategy continues. Hall looking to get to the outside, and he does, but there is a flat. So Hall gets across the 40. But that one last key block that sprung him is probably the one that's coming back. That's got to be the third hold on this kickoff return team for Central Florida to start their drives. Not a good day for their special teams. During the return, holding number 20, the return team. It's a 10-yard penalty, first down. So that's on the wide receiver, Taylor Oldham. Yeah, and you see George O'Leary there. I mean, you don't want to read his lips, but he's, he's not happy about that call or that play. But listen, to get your hands in that jersey and that defender starts pulling away, you better let go because they're going to call it every time. 
So Bortles and the Knights looking to answer Walker and the Owls. Down by six against a team winless in the American Conference. Johnson to the left gets the edge. And there's another flag. Yeah, they're going to get Godfrey there. Black on the outside. Again, it's nothing Temple's doing. It's just that, you know, Central Florida is hurting themselves with these plays. Holding number two of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. From the Knights, 13. Bortles looking for Wharton, who's become his money man here this afternoon, and it's a first down pickup. He might as well join the circus because this kid makes every tough catch. That's being thrown to him today by Blake Bortles. Unbelievable. That one looked easy after some of the other ones That's he's a, had this afternoon. But. I love the way he plays. He's gritty. He goes out there. He's not the fastest wide receiver, but he gets that separation that he needs to make plays. Play fake to Johnson. Now this is Tukes in the open field. And the big tight end lumbers his way for a first down. Looks like a first down. Now they mark him short. Tukes, of course, played a key role in that fourth and goal play when he and Miller basically ran to the same spot. Now second and one. You wonder if this is a play where they look deep, but without Perriman, who is that deep threat? For sure, Hall is a guy that can stretch the defense. Instead, they put it on the ground, and Johnson hit behind the line of scrimmage. Nate D. Smith and Hassan Reddick. Loss of one, and the coaches were looking for Reddick to play a role when we met with them yesterday. They were. He's not on scholarship. He's a red shirt freshman. He's only six foot 215, and they're working him in at the defensive end position. Great play by that young man. Taking advantage of opportunities when they come your way. They stopped him on fourth and goal. Now the Knights look to keep the drive going with the third and two from the UCF 41. Bortles to throw. Here comes pressure. The screen. Godfrey well behind. The first down behind the line of scrimmage. Phil Snow's defense snuffed that one out for a loss of one. Jahad Thomason on the play. Kamal Johnson as well. Houston out to punt. The third phase of the game aiming is special teams. And that can quietly be a dangerous place for teams. End over end kick from Houston. Makes Alderman go and get it, but it goes out of bounds. So you talk about finish. A full fourth quarter in 38 seconds, but now an opportunity for Walker and the Owls to create a bigger cushion. And they're going to stay aggressive. They told us, coaches told us, we're not going to hold back. We're going to continue to go, and that's what they have to do in this game. Walker gets hit behind the line of scrimmage on the design run. Terrence Plummer brings him down, but Troy Gray broke through and made the first contact. But one thing I've noticed with P.J. Walker now is he runs the ball. Protecting that ball, it gets a little loose when he starts to tw twist and turn. That, that's, that's something to look at. It's, it's not been a factor now, but I'll tell you what, guys like Plummer and guys like Gathers, they'll, they'll sniff that out. And if they get their chance, they've been very good at causing turnovers in this game. We have a score that is sending shockwaves across the American Athletic Conference. Temple, winless in conference play, one win on the season, the the takes quarter. a six-point lead on the 17th-ranked team in the BCS into the fourth quarter. George O'Leary's club on upset alert. At Papa John's, we want you to know that from our 450-degree oven to box to you, it's our policy that your pizza is never touched once it comes out of the oven. And we're taking extra steps like no contact delivery to ensure it. You're watching Night's Rewatch presented by Dex Imaging. Do business better. Now back to UCF football. And now it's up to the defense to give the ball back to Blake Bortles. While it's still a one possession ball game, PJ Walker and the Owls with other ideas. They roll Walker out to the right. Dangerous pass, good adjustment, and catch made by Temple. That's Christopher. How can you not be impressed with P.J. Walker? I mean, we've done several of his games. We've seen his development. 
With that throw right there, folks, when you're rolling out of the pocket, you got a defender chasing you, you put it on the body of a receiver. Well done. We talked about Stanback's recruiting odyssey. P.J. Walker's is an interesting story as well. First and 10 from the 41. Looking for the screen. Good pump fake, but Williams can't make the grab. P.J. Walker was coming to Temple to play for Steve Adazio. Steve Adazio's offense, he called plays for Tim Tebow at Florida. Loves that dual threat quarterback. So then all of a sudden, Steve Adazio leaves for Boston College. P.J. Walker's never heard of Matt Rule. Matt Rule doesn't know who P.J. Walker is. Matt Rule gets that tape, looks at it for what do you say, about five seconds, ten seconds, says, oh, hold on a second, that's our guy. Keeping him at Temple is priority number one. And it has paid off this year as a true freshman. Walker with time, and he throws it away to his coach. So Matt Rule. Love it. You know, to add to that story, you know, when, a, when Coach Adazio left, I asked P.J. Walker, I said, listen, what sold you to stay and continue to come back to Temple? And he says, I talked to Coach Rule, and I just, you know, I loved him. He's loyal, and he just, I trusted the words he was saying. And he said, don't forget, he was with the Giants staff last year, bringing that uh, pro-style offense that really made him excited about coming here and running it. And that rule tells us that Giants playbook is the Bible. One year under Tom Coughlin, an assistant offensive line coach. Now third and 10, Walker out of the pocket, makes a man miss, and he is wide open in the middle of the field. Still on his feet, down to the UCF 30. He made Plummer. A very good tackler missing the open field, and he picks up 29 yards. Running it forward to Williams. Big hit by Mamiya. I will reiterate this, though, about UCF's defense. They might not be in the top defenses in the country, but what they've been able to do is create turnovers in situations in the game when they need a big play. It looks grim, doesn't look like they're playing well, and all of a sudden, forced fumble, interception. That's what they've been good at this year. Now on the other side, if this is your first Temple game, the kicking game is almost non-existent. Right now, if you're Marcus Satterfield on the 28, you got to imagine you're working with three downs. Walker buying some time, and he will run out of time as he is brought down by Mamiya. So the pocket collapses, first sack of the afternoon. Anthony, how does the lack of a reliable kicking game impact the play call here on third and 15? Well, there's no question with the yardage loss here, it is a big decision they're going to have to make moving forward. Walker cannot get out of the pocket, now he does. And he throws it away. So I imagine they'll punt and try to pin him inside the 10. On fourth and 15 now from the 35. Yep. And they send out Leighton. DeAndre Barnett bringing the pressure, forcing Walker out of the pocket and to throw it away. And it's really a huge sack. Great job by the defensive line of Central Florida. Get him out of that hole. I mean, listen, Temple's offense has been moving up and down this field. They needed a big play, and they got it to force the punt. So Wharton goes back to the 10. There's Leighton. He buried his first point of the afternoon inside the one. And this is his third punt. Looks like they might have been running a fake here. They just, I saw the coach on the sideline waving his arms, no, 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 so. The offense, it's a five yard penalty, fourth down. They tried that against SMU and it backfired, so maybe he was thinking that as well. And also you give Leighton five more yards, yards to work yep. with. Exactly. UCF can field the punt. Blake Bortles in the offense will get the ball back. Still a one possession game. Looking for the corner, it is high. Fitzpatrick down there, but it bounces out of bounds. Hi, I'm Danny White with UCF Athletics. We want you to show your UCF pride with the new UCF plate. Please ask for the new UCF license plate at your county tax collector's office and night your ride. 
12 minutes and 15 seconds away from Temple's first win over a ranked team since 1998. Bortles. They run it up the middle. Caponegro stops Stanback. A gain of three. Football's all about grooves, getting in to some continuity. And with Temple with these long drives, really kept the ball out of this offense for Central Florida. So they haven't been able to quite get in those grooves to get those long drives. And they had to punt last series. See here if they can get something going here on second down. They try the jet sweep again. Hall gets away from Matikiewicz. Heads up field and gets the first down. Nate D. Smith brings him down, but that looked like it could have been a disaster. Instead, Caponegro. Well, Caponegro's only got one hand out there with that cast wrapped around it, so. But great stiff arm there by Hall. I mean, really aggressive play there with that young man to make something out of nothing. You know, I get my tough guy numbers confused. All those tough guys in the single digits. That's, that's right. been the tradition here at Temple. Six and eight. But Hall wearing a single digit pretty tough as well. Back out on the field and with a big play. Now he's looking deep over the middle for Godfrey. You cannot hang on. Abdul Smith in coverage. This is Reese in motion. They give it to Stanback. Hit behind the line and he will go down. Shabazz Ahmed, the first man there. Medicaid has talked about storming to the ball. 11 guys getting the football. That was probably the best example. Third and 11 now for the 17th ranked team in the BCS. Undefeated in American play. In control of its own destiny, but right now Bortles and the Knights need a first down. Quick release over the middle behind Wart, incomplete. Wharton wasn't ready for it. You see Blake Bortles coming off the sidelines. He's frustrated right now. But what's going on? The so fans are frustrated <laughs> as well. You could sense talking to George O'Leary this week that he had an idea they'd be in for a dogfight. High snap. Houston gets it off. Good kick. Alderman, no fair catch, makes the first guy miss. Up the middle, gets across the 40. So the Temple Al offense back out there. Under 10 minutes to play in regulation when we return. Addition Financial can't help Olivia's mom make a perfect unicorn cake. But for smart financing, money management, and college savings, Count us in. Looked like he was waiting for that Michael Jackson tune to be played on the uh, by the stereo system all day long. He started dancing as Harper danced his way across the 45, brought down by Ozerite to pick up a five. Jim Fleming once again needs a stop. Here's a look at the freshman Shaquille Griffin. Keep in mind with wins over Houston and Louisville and not meeting Cincinnati, the Knights, even if Temple does hang on here, would still be in control of its own destiny for the conference title and the BCS bid that goes with it. But that is the last thing in their minds right now. They want to get a stop and get the ball back to Bortles, and they clog it up on Harper there. Troy Gray leading the way, which now sets up another third down conversion. For Walker. Well, you watch this drive now. We see two unorthodox plays we haven't seen. Two runs back to back. So, to me, are we trying to milk the clock down? Or are we trying to stay the course and be aggressive? They talked about coaches on this Temple staff staying aggressive and going out there and playing the game. Now, if you start changing it up, you give Central Florida a chance to stop you on defense. Walker waiting for the signals. He doesn't have any play call yet and already eight on the play clock. Looks like they're going to have to take a timeout. And they do. Temple calls its first time out of the half. So P.J. Walker and the Owls facing a third and five. We'll see what they come up with when we return. 
At Chick-fil-A, we may be about the little things, but for us, community is a big thing. It brings out the best in us all, even in times as uncertain as these. While we can't have the pleasure of serving you in our dining areas, we're still here for you with delivery, drive through and mobile order where possible in compliance with state and local regulations. Order through the Chick-fil-A app or our delivery partners, and we'll see you soon. In the meantime, let's all take good care of each other. Third and five. You mentioned it. Are you conservative or are you aggressive? You're looking at a quarterback run here? Well, they're going to go. They'll be aggressive on this play, but the first two snaps, folks, were two runs in a row by the running back, but they are in a third and short situation. UCF coming up. Here comes pressure. Walker out of the pocket. Gets rid of it. Catch not made. Great knock away at the end. Robbie Anderson had it, but Shaquille Griffin, the freshman, knocks it out of his hands. So now Layton looking to pin UCF back inside the 20. Gets off a boomer. Good high kick. Does it stay in bounds? Wharton makes the grab. Fair catch. Called for at the 16, a 38-yard punt, no return. So Bortles and the Knights, 84 yards away from regaining the lead. They have been here before. You think about Louisville on that Friday night. There's no question. They've been in this situation many times. They're confident. They have a veteran led group on offense. It starts at the QB position. And I don't think any of those guys are nervous. They understand what they have to do, and they have confidence in the players in that huddle to make those plays. Johnson in the backfield, twins to both sides. Bortles, dangerous throw, almost. And there's a late flag. Wow. Tavon Young made a break on that ball on Hall, and he might have come through the back of Rennell Hall. And that's the call. Pass interference, number 25 of the defense, playing through the back of the receiver. The spot foul, automatic, first down. So it's now first and 10 from the 23, over the middle, Hall in strong. Gets hit hard by Abdul Smith, but he holds on to the ball for a 16-yard gain. Now you see the Owls slow to get up, Young down on the field. If you looked at the American Conference today at the two noon games, you thought the dogfight might be in Piscataway and the walkover in Philadelphia situation exactly opposite. But now Bortles in the open field, gets out of bounds. Short of the first down. Jihad Pretlo forcing him out, a pickup of eight. Can't forget about Blake Bortles and his ability to run with the football. Huge chunk of yardage right there to get you second and short really opens up the playbook on these type of situations when you have at least two chances to get short yarded. Now the pocket collapses. He gets rid of it anyway to Wharton into Temple territory. Shipping in on the hit along with Sharif Finch. So an eight-yard pickup by number nine. J.J. Wharton, eight catches for 111 yards. That's been his go-to guy. A guy you can count on. I mean, every catch that he's made has been a tough catch with defenders on him. Uses his body well in space as a wide receiver to make the plays and you know, understands the technique at the position. He had a big game against Connecticut with six catches for 119 yards and a touchdown. Trips to the right, Hall, bottom of your screen left. Here comes pressure from Temple. They pick it up and they get rid of it to Hall. He breaks two tackles and then pushed out of bounds. Looked like Hershey Walton hustling to finally hit him out after Shippen missed and Avery Williams missed. So number six working hard to pick up six yards. Reese Godfrey Wharton to the right. Johnson in the backfield. Bortles with time over the middle. Guess who? J.J. Wharton still on his feet at the 10, the 5. He will score. What an afternoon for J.J. Wharton. He's been the X factor here today of this receiving crew. All over the field, making the tough catches. Finally gets some room to make a play after the catch. 
And you see here, he just runs a slant route, crosses the face of the defender. And can you make somebody miss? Right there, Temple's in position to make a tackle, but they don't get it done. And if you make a mistake against Central Florida, folks, they're going to make you pay. Kick is good, but there's a flag. Looks like maybe running into the kicker. It's a 38-yard touchdown play. Running into the kicker, number 22 on the defense. That penalty is declined. The try is good. Gilmore and Thomas back. The one thing they do have, obviously, though, is plenty of time. Six minutes and 37 seconds left. This will be Thomas from the three. Looking to get to the wedge, and he gets across the 15. If you were watching Cincinnati play Rutgers, the Bearcats putting the final touches on that win. Welcome to Philadelphia, Zaire Williams with the short gain. A four yard pickup. A couple of weeks ago when Temple paid a visit to Piscataway, a lot of coverage being given to P.J. Walker's return to New Jersey and the fact that as a high school senior, he led a game-winning touchdown drive in the state championship game, 90-plus yards. That was against Piscataway High. This is against the 17th-ranked team in the BCS. Over the middle, Fitzpatrick can't reach back for the grab. Temple now facing a third and six. In these situations, as a young quarterback, you got to be on point. You got a slant route, it's open, the ball's been a little bit behind, and he's been very efficient as a quarterback in this game. But we're talking about it means something now. You're down a point, you're in a big game, you got a chance. He's gonna have to grow up and learn real quick right here on this drive, try to move the chains on this third and six. You wonder the way Matt Rule is coached if it's four down territory, even with 551 left to play and two timeouts. Walker has gone cold all of a sudden, missing his last five pass attempts. Looking to stop that, but he gets picked off. Brandon Alexander, the American Athletic Defensive Player of the Week, might have just shut the door on Walker and the Owls and the upset bid. He played defensive end at Evans High in Orlando. The former walk-on has gone from corner to safety, back to safety. And now Temple has to take a timeout. I tell you, Sharif Finch, or Hassan Reddick, excuse me, came close to knocking that out of Storm Johnson's hands, but Johnson able to hold on to it. If I'm Central Florida now, listen, I got to try to put some more points up to this on this scoreboard because this offense now, Temple, they can create plays, continue to be aggressive, make plays, find J.J. Warren. He's been the guy right now that's been hot in this game. He is in the slot to the left of Bortles. Trips to that side, Temple showing pressure. Now they back off. Godfrey can't make the grab. So now third and long. And Temple doesn't have to take a timeout on the incompletion. That's right. Stops the clock. Third and long. Johnson had 115 yards on eight carries in the first half. Second half, a different story. Just seven yards on six carries. He probably won't touch it here on third and 10 in the run game. Bortles has Hall overshoots him, and Hall saved an interception by lunging out for that play. That will not show up in the box score other than an incompletion. Alderman lets it go. Good decision as he goes into the end zone. So the door opens up back a bit for the Owls. The defense gets it back to P.J. Walker after the interception. Four minutes and 51 seconds left. And again, to emphasize Anthony's point, a field goal at this point really is not an option for the Owls. So Walker, the freshman, looking to bounce back from the interception. 80 yards away from a touchdown. You wonder where we put that green line with Visco and Jim Cooper as far as a field goal. Keep in mind, just one field goal on the season for this Temple Club. Bunch formation to the right on first and 10 from the 20. They start on the ground with Harper, who bounces it outside. 
Gets the first down and gets out of bounds. A nice stiff arm on Jordan Ozerites. 14 yard pickup. Such a strong runner. You see the power, the ability to get away from block uh, tacklers and stiff arm them. Oh man, that was just a, a devastating stiff arm he just laid on Ozerites there. Twins to the right, Anderson, top of your screen left. They stick with Harper. He pushes the pile forward. Strong, tough running by the junior from Gainesville. Seven yard pickup. Here you see Nick Visco, the freshman from Churchville, Pennsylvania. The other kicker is Jim Cooper, the freshman from Linwood, New Jersey. They go to Williams to the left, nothing doing. No gain, so that'll set up third and three. Troy Gray with another tackle. Here you see Visco, his one field goal on the year from 25 yards. I'll say this, just knowing a little bit about Matt Rule, if they get in that situation to kick, I see him actually giving this kid a chance just to show his belief in the, in the young man, even though he hasn't had success, I just he's that kind of guy that rubs off on of me, that believes in his players in certain situations. Unfortunately for Temple fans, they're nowhere near that point right now, but they will get a first down. John Christopher, the birthday boy, makes a six-yard catch. Twins to the right, Fitzpatrick, bottom of your screen. Harper has an alley. Harper in the open field, inside the 35. Brandon Alexander saves a touchdown, but Kenneth Harper rips off 21 yards. Bunch formation wide to the left. Harper in the backfield. Fitzpatrick, bottom of your screen right. Here comes pressure. Harper runs right into it and beats it. Inside the 20. Ozerite finally brings him down, but inside the 10-yard line. First and goal for Walker and the Owls. Harper back out there. They give it to him, and he runs right into the pressure. And Plummer and about three or four other Knights, including Troy Gray, make the tackle. UCF calls it second time out of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. So Harper's helmet came off. Now let's take a look at our good hands play of the day brought to you by Allstate and pick any one of J.J. Wharton's catches, I guess. Yeah, we're probably going to pick. We could have done multiple ones. You're, you're definitely right, but right here. That's the one where you sent him to the circus, though, I think. So yeah. that's what put it over the top. I mean, listen, when you got to turn your body as a receiver, the concentration level while you're in the air twisting. But remember, you Excellent. talked about we could have picked a bunch. You go back to that one where he caught along the sidelines yes. late in the first half. That kept that drive alive. Originally called incomplete. If yes. that doesn't get reversed, you don't kick a field goal, and it's a completely different story here in the second half. Yeah, he stepped up his game. You know, without Perryman, a guy that's made big plays down the field, who didn't play today for Central Florida, he's really stepped up big for this Central Florida team. You know Matt Rule, a rookie head coach, Anthony, so you want to be a head coach. You want to be in charge of the program. <laughs> How do you manage this without a reliable kicking game? Because if you have a reliable kicking game, you think, do I make Central Florida burn another timeout? Do I work it down as much as possible and kick the chip shot? Or do I throw it and risk yeah. the interception? I mean, this is not, Listen. this is on the job training, but with a little curveball there. Listen, I, to me, set the ball up in the middle of the field and let the kid kick it. You know, we're not talking about a deep kick. He's warmed up before the game. This is basically a chip shot, so. And Walker, can he get the corner? He's got a man wide open in the end zone. Park the ball. Unbelievable. That was not the design play. P.J. Walker creating on the fly, and Temple goes back on top with 2.04 left to play. Are you kidding me? They had a dead play going, rolling to the right side. They got several receivers trying to get open, and all of a sudden, P.J. Walker hits the brakes, comes back around, and that's the most dangerous thing 
for a defense to let a quarterback that's mobile move around and he finds a wide open Parthamore, the tight end coming across the field for a huge touchdown. So now they go for two to make it a seven point spread and they might have to take a timeout here. So critical two points here. Walker's looking to keep it himself and jump throw right to the lineman. That's Parthamore again. Listen, preparation in play calling in situations is what they just did there. They've shown that quarterback run early in the game when he ran in for the touchdown, sucked in the defense, and they jumped it out. Little jump pass, little Tebow S. Here's the touchdown. Rolling to his right. Thought about running it. Still thinking about running it. The eyes down the field. I mean, that was not a design pass. And then Parthamore, all that body armor, all that equipment. I thought he was a lineman, but Parthamore with the touchdown and the two point conversion. Again, the only tight end left. Chris Coyer's dressed, but really unable to go. But you mentioned it. Tebow esque. Remember, he came here to run that Tim Tebow offense for Steve Adazio. That's right. And they go back to that play for the two point conversion. But again, 2.04 left to play against Blake Bortles and Storm Johnson with one timeout left. Temple has been in this situation before. Just in the last game, they could have closed the deal with a fourth and one or getting a stop on fourth and ten. So plenty of time left for the Knights who have big play capability. Pacifico is brewed for those who follow their own path. That's Living Life Anchors Up. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. Stand back. Another short kick. Hall doesn't have to run up to get this one, but he fields it from the 15, and he has an alley. Ran into his own guy. Looked like he had a seam for a burst. It was Bortles on a drive. How many clutch plays did they make on that drive? Third down, fourth down, yep. before he finally hooked up with Godfrey. Well, you want to be great in college football, the quarterback position, this is Blake Bortles' time right here. That's the third time I've seen that play. The hard slant right up the middle. Bortles throws it off balance. Got to be, he's got to make it tougher for this offense on defense here for Temple. Hall with another big catch. Eight yard gain, so just like that. They're in Temple territory and threatening. Over the middle, Hall with a tremendous grab. A 12-yard pickup. It's been the Rennell Hall drive so far. He's bottom of your screen left. Here comes pressure. Bortle sees it coming. Looking for Wharton in the end zone. Wharton behind the defense. Oh! Are you kidding? <laughs> wow. Wow. We gave away the good hands play of the game a bit early. Bortles keeping the play alive. Gets knocked down, throws this ball, looks like it's way overthrown. And J.J. Wharton, I love it. This kid has played the game of his life and another circus catch for this young man to give Central Florida the lead. Hashtag Sports Center top 10 that one. Check that, the top. What a game we got here. 
10 catches, 179 yards, three touchdowns, and all of them almost feel like they have been highlight reel variety. Some days you're just in the zone as a receiver. You feel like you can catch anything, any ball that goes up and that's thrown, you can pull it in. Oh, what a what a catch. Unbelievable. That's a top tenner for sure today. And the quarterback standing in there, making the throw, knowing he's going to take a shot. With that, all that being said, Eamon, a minute six left. So Temple has time to try to make some plays here and get themselves in a situation where they might get a chance to kick a field goal where they've only kicked two the whole entire season. Gilmore and Thomas. We've had nine lead changes now with 66 seconds left in regulation. We have our first tie. Short kick, returnable. Thomas from the 10. Fights his way out across the 30. That is where P.J. Walker and the Owls will take over. One minute left. One, two timeouts for the Owls. You know, we've been preaching it all day for Temple. They hadn't finished the game in four quarters. But folks, guess what? They might have to play a fifth one in this game today, but they've done a great job for a young team stepping in here. And you look at P.J. Walker coming on this field, you got you to give this kid a high five for his performance today in this game, what he's been able to do. Look at those numbers. Remember, let's tag this on it. He's a true freshman. Whatever happens in this game, the future is bright for Temple football. We talked all about Central Florida's close wins. On the flip side, it's been the close loss, the story for Temple. Now Walker for Fitzpatrick. What's the call? Yes, sir. Good catch, they say. Those are rights in coverage, but the 5'11 Fitzpatrick able to climb the ladder for the grab in 13 yards. Great job. Catch the ball as high as point. Man, that's close. Those toes are right there, but he stays in bounds. Now they're going to take a look. Certainly from that angle, you didn't see enough evidence to overturn it. The ruling on the field is a reception for a first down. That play is under review. That was a quick glance from one angle. Again, our replay official, Jack Kramer. I don't know if you have enough from that angle. Yeah, you know, I don't. Definitively I say he came down on white. You know, when a receiver comes down with his feet in that angle coming down to the field, you're pushing towards out of bounds and hitting the grass first. It almost looks like it touches out of bounds, but really his feet are in inbounds early. It, that looks clean. It, uh, I that mean, looks not. like it confirms it. By a fraction. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Temple. the wide receiver play both teams I mean we're seeing some spectacular catches today guys just going out there making football plays let me ask you something Anthony how does Temple's inability to make a field goal with just one play on the way Jim Fleming defends this Do you, are you more aggressive or you know sort of not afraid to give up field goal range well to me yeah you want to force them to, you know if they have to if they get in that situation looking deep for Anderson but he overshoots him I guess my question is do you play more in prevent because you're not you're not afraid if they get down to the 35 as opposed to giving up the big play like that? Well, I think you stay with your plan. I think their their defense today, although giving up big yards, you got to put it on your players. Players go out there, they know the defensive call. They got to go in situations and make plays. They got to make a stop. Don't don't give up the big play like they almost did there. Keep it in front of you. And if the worst case scenario, make them kick a long field goal, which they haven't done all year long. Walker 
Calls his own number and he gets hit by Niles. Well, you have two timeouts left and Matt Rule will take number two right now with 36 seconds left. Temple calls its second timeout of the game. Only a 30 second timeout. Now Central Florida has a timeout left as well. And a very reliable kicker, but 36 seconds left. You look at the chess match here. Yeah. You know, even if you get a stop and force a punt, because right, I think play. that weighs in if you're Temple. What do you call here? Do you, yeah, you're right. Do you play for overtime? Do you? Well, well, obviously the key here for Temple would be to move the chains. Third and 12, man. You're, you're asking a lot out of your offensive players to make that play. To me, listen, be smart with this. Maybe roll out, give him an option, one, two. If it's not there, you can get it out of bounds. Or maybe he can make a play with his legs to get the first down. But don't try to force anything or it's clouded. And a lot of players are for on defense for Central Florida. That's a lot on the plate for a freshman quarterback against the 17th ranked team in the BCS. They're going to let him throw it. Here comes pressure off the edge. And he does not get rid of it. So now George O'Leary quickly calls a timeout with 28 seconds left. DeAndre Barnett. True freshman coming in this game. Young players making plays. Central Florida, UCF calls its last timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. So now Leighton, you talk about special teams, Anthony Beck. How many guys do they send after the punter here? Well, yeah, I mean, listen, you got several options. You can hold up, try to get a big return, try to get out. You got to watch, though. You don't want to get a personal foul running into the kicker. A lot of things can go wrong when you try to go for the rush. To me, it's really about hold up. If you can hold up the guys at the line, let your playmaker, who's made spectacular catches today, J.J. Wharton, make a big play with his legs and get you closer to where you can kick a field goal. Leighton standing on the Temple 21. Gets it off. Wharton from the 25. Brought down at the 30. 42-yard kick, five-yard return. John Christopher with the tackle. So 19 seconds left. Sean Moffitt. Has a 50-yarder on his resume this year. Had one blocked from 50 yards last week. He has hit two today. George O'Leary out of timeouts. And again, the real vertical threat, Brashad Perriman, is back in Orlando, but Hall, bottom of your screen, to the left, trips to the right. Bortles. Looking for Wharton, looking for Hall at the 30, the 20. Tripped up. Gotta get up on the ball here. Clock does stop with the first down. You see him hustling. What a season it has been for Central Florida. That's the way it's been going. They have to clock it and then get Moffitt out there. 64 yards. They gotta get rid of it. That was close. They well, with the new too rule. close for yeah. comfort with the new rule. Just when you think you're on tap for overtime, Bortles finds Hall. Looked like it was too. Looked like he was overshooting Morton, and Hall right ran it down. Well, you know, Roby's off coverage for Temple's defense, and he bites on that head fake to the post route. And Rennell Hall, if he gets a step, he's going to blow by, and Blake Bortles. Drops one in perfectly. Temple calls its final timeout of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. You talk about a game that is a microcosm of two seasons. It is this one for these two teams. You see here at the bottom of the screen, he's going to give him a head fake right there and just runs by Roby. Great speed. You got to honor it. They're in off coverage. You see that head fake, you got to turn your hips and run and explode to the ball. And right there, just too much speed. Look Hall. at the offense we have seen here today, but 
You see them bite on the pump fake, and that goes back to the frustration that they felt two weeks ago in Rutgers when they were playing press on the all-out blitz. This is from 24 for the win. Sean Moffitt. Flag on the play. Did they run into the kicker again? If it's good, the Knights remain perfect. An American Athletic Conference Running play. into the kicker on the defense. That penalty's declined. Field goal is good. George O'Leary and the Knights escape Philadelphia. I'll tell you what, a great effort by this young Temple team. But when you have a team like Central Florida, a team that's been under adversity throughout the season, have had many comeback wins as we showed you three games this year, they were able to pull out. And when you're ranked as high as they are and you play these games and you're in these situations, when you have good players, especially at Blake, Blake Bortles at quarterback, he makes the big play for you to set up that field goal. And he has two gutsy wide receivers as well. Let's send it down to Brook. Well, Coach, uh, I'd imagine this is one of the tougher games you've seen this season, but this team still stays resilient. How did they do it? Well, I, I tell you what, we're very fortunate this game here. Way too many mistakes, but we came through at the end and got, you know, I thought Blake played extremely well, got the ball to the open receivers, and, uh, you know, great win, great end to a game. How would you describe the effort you saw from Blake and J.J. Wharton headed down the stretch? Just great, outstanding throws, outstanding catches, and, uh, just very happy for our team, but we were very fortunate today. I thought Temple played extremely well. If you were going into the Temple locker room right now, what words would you have for those guys? Keep your head up and, uh, fellas, good things are going to happen. And just looking ahead to the rest of the season, what does a win in this kind of situation put you guys? Well, it puts us still in first place and uh, undefeated, but uh, give credit to Temple. I, I thought they played a well of a game. and. Uh, Things are going to change for them. I think they're doing a great job coaching those kids, and uh, we were very fortunate today. Where does Blake Bortles rank as a quarterback in this conference? Well, I, I, he, all he does is win, and uh, I think when uh, plays with great, great poise, and uh, you know, and he's pretty competitive as far as getting the ball to the right people and getting some key first downs with his feet. So, um, great game, great win, and uh, it'll be a happy high ride home to Orlando. Thank Coach, you. thank you, Amen. All right, Brooke, a very entertaining 60 minutes of football, especially the final 15 minutes of regulation. Well, we said it before the game, Eamon. This was Temple's bowl game, and, and, and Coach O'Leary knew they were going to come in. And here in the fourth quarter, your big-time player's got to come up, and J.J. Warren has had a spectacular game today with that huge catch. But P.J. Walker and Temple come right back, and you look, he uses his legs, keeps his vision, gets the score, and, of course, they have to go for two. Little jump pass to Parker Moore again, but you give him you give him time on the clock. We're going to make plays. Came right back, JJ Wharton. Then after Hall's big catch, Moffitt with the field goal. It's been an exciting game to call today, but UCF comes out with the win. The chess match, the clock management. George O'Leary able and his defense to get the ball back to Blake Bortles with enough time for them to take the shot with Hall and not play for the tie in overtime. So Central Florida, you see it there on his face. <laughs> Woo! And he can survive and he can look ahead to Rutgers on Thursday night, a quick turnaround. As now the Knights remain perfect in American play. They remain in the top 20 in the BCS rankings. And uh, now, you didn't think you would ask them this. Now they have to avoid a letdown after this win as they get ready to play Rutgers on Thursday night. But Central Florida wins it back and forth. I've lost count of the lead changes we had. You heard George O'Leary say you got to give Temple credit. It looked like we were going to overtime, but that big pass to Hall. Well, listen, every time you play an opponent, they're going to raise their level of play when they play a team like Central Florida. And you've got to be able to raise your level of play. Every week it's going to be tougher and tougher because your eyes on the prize and teams are looking to knock you down. So for Central Florida, I think this builds character. It's a wake-up call, really, moving forward so they can finish this season strong. It might be the best thing that happened to them this year. So the Knights remain undefeated in American Athletic Conference play. And they remain on schedule for the BCS. Temple's woulda, coulda, shoulda continues. We're taking a break from Philadelphia. Thank you for watching Knights Re-Air. 
presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side.